Hi, I'm Matt. I'm one of the game masters here at the Favorite Few Gaming Group. Our game worlds may include real world issues and there can be adult subjects and themes in our sessions. While our goal is never to promote or extol them, issues such as drug and alcohol use, sexism, racism, and addiction all exist within our game worlds, along with adult themes such as explicit language, sex, and violence. We ask you to remember that this is a fantasy and a role-playing game. Nothing said during any of our sessions should ever be taken as a depiction of who we are as people, nor our political or social ideologies. We are simply players sitting around a table playing the roles of fictional and imaginary characters. Viewer discretion is advised. We thank you for your understanding. If you choose to continue, I really hope you enjoy the show. Hi, fuckers on the internet. No, I, that's that's how I open sometimes. These people are weird. I don't normally play with these guys. <laughs> We're strangers. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen me in like half a decade. Something like that. It's still good though. Everything's fine. We're, yeah, we're having months. a great time. We're having a great time. So tonight we'll be playing uh, Asuna Broken Memories, which is a direct tie-in to the campaign that I've been running full-time, uh, Asuna Crystalline Memories. So Broken Memories is set 25 years in the past, before the events of my first campaign. The choices and things that you guys do tonight during your game in the next three sessions will directly impact some story beats for them moving forward. Interesting. Cool. So you could give them a lot of grief if you want to, or you can make some things easier. No, no, let's make it awful for you. <laughs> let's just make it awful. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's go around the table and talk about who you are. Describe your character, Will. I'm a sorcerer. I'm a human. I'm a hermit. A hermit? I live in the woods. Yeah, right. You're one of the most social people I know. I know. The opposite. <laughs> I'm a hermit. I'm an old man. <laughs> I'm on my couch. You're beautiful. It's be you helped me with that couch. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> the old one sucks so bad. But I, I, this is literally like the second time in decades I've played this game. So There you go. This is going to be so much right. fun. What race are you? Human. Human. Very basic. The basic of all bitches. Yes. <laughs> I'm just right, realizing I have, that Will and I roll the same thing, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jerry, what about you? I am a uh, forest gnome. Forest gnome. Land druid. Land druid. Circle of land druid. Yep. Hell yeah. And he's got the hermit background too. Just because it. You it, guys hermiting together? Good. Co hermiting. Co hermiting. Co hermiting. <laughs> Co hermiting. <laughs> Docking. <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you hermit too. And uh, <laughs> so. I've rolled a human wizard, and oh, where were my manners? <laughs> uh, my name is Vincent Hondertart, and um, Vincent is an older cloistered scholar, so not exactly the hermit, but basically a non-social person as well. I fixed that. I had a broken thing. I didn't know what I did, but I did. Broken? Sure. Yeah. Anxiety. I tried to make sure things weren't broken, and here I am with broken things. My character's name is Neffin. Your character's name is Trank. Trank? It, like Trank. ketamine? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there making sounds at home, and I was like, that sounds cool. Oh, why not? You just make it sound that <laughs> well, it was creating the character I was doing, not just sitting there. It's passing out at home. <laughs> Chat says, Did he just say Landrew? <laughs> Landrew? Right. So, change the music. It's not such a bad time right now. There we go. Okay. 
So, all of you, we'll introduce you to the world a little bit here. The world we're playing in is called Isuna, and it is written by me and a few other people who have a knack for making things from nothing. And the primary hub for the world is a big city called Cradle. Cradle is the equivalent, it'd be like this world's water deep. The biggest city uh, here. The history, written history goes back roughly a thousand years. And before that, we kind of don't know what happened because there was like an extinction level event that happened here. So written history sort of starts then. Um, there is a ginormous crystal that is underneath Cradle, where it's, which is the essence of where all magic is kept. So in order to be a magic user that is ordained, quote unquote, you have to make your pilgrimage to Cradle and pass the trials. So I assume both of you have never been to Cradle. So it's because uh, it takes quite a bit of money and it could be what you're saving for, pilgrimage, but it's sacred to all casters at some point to make your way to Cradle. You still practice magic, nothing illegal about it, but you can charge a substantial amount more for services if you're ordained. Hmm. <clears throat> you guys are in the small area up here called Iron Mill. Iron Mill is a very rugged, very cold place, it, uh, but it, it also has quite a bit of vegetation in the southern parts of it. It is known for um, ore and mining, and gnomes and dwarves make their, a lot of their homes here. This is an engineering marvel. A lot of the things that come out of here, some of the most technologically advanced stuff in the world. Um, fire rooms exist, tanks exist, everything. Like this is not just high fantasy. It's got steampunk elements to it too. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <clears throat> you can think of this area kind of like the Wild West in that there is no real law here other than what you're packing. So there's money to be made if you're brave enough. Okay. All three of you have known each other for a very long time. You've worked together on several missions in the past and you've been pretty profitable until now. Our, uh, our friend here has gotten in deep with some gambling debt. Okay. So you are currently at a local watering hole, Eagle's Nest, and you are scouting perspective contracts that are on a post-it board outside okay the town is bustling uh, relatively small population probably 250 people for the whole town um, it's just outside some farmland um, one of the one of the things that makes this place really unique is the soil the soil here is very fertile um, one of the biggest farms in the world is, is more toward this area over here to the west uh, on Aurelius, Aurelius is basically the farmland for the this entire continent. It's a it's a harvest state, but Iron Mill can provide quite can it's special because it's one of the only places in the world that's self sustaining. So, <clears throat> if you carve out an existence for yourself somewhere and you want to be left the hell alone, Iron Mill is a good place to do it. Yeah. There's a lot of that here. People buy up chunks of land park little huts and houses and just see how far they can get away from the highway and people still see their finger. <laughs> Me all rule of thumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, the evening is wearing down. You've, uh, there's been no real success in job hunting and your regulars here. So you're familiar with the barkeeps and you're familiar with the with the ins and in ins and outs and none of you really have homes except you know your, your head is where lay where you where you lay it or whatever. So um you can go in and have a drink and have a good time if that's what you'd like to do. We're bums. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> Sounds good. You weren't bums until he decided he wanted to get rich quick. Just the thought that counts. <laughs> and he drug us into his pyramid scheme selling <laughs> vacuum cleaners. In a world that does not know what vacuum cleaners are. I don't know, it's steampunk. They oh, have yes. tanks. They have vacuums probably. <laughs> Imagine a steampunk steam power vacuum cleaner. I don't know. Cleaner. Vacuum cleaner? Yeah. If I would have known we had tanks, I would have rolled an artifice in. Be like, what's better than a howitzer? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing is better than a howitzer. <laughs> Thank you.
All right. So we've already looked at the, uh, the yeah the job post posting board. yeah the post board. There's some stuff. Go save a cat from a tree. I've lost my necklace. There's shit like that, mm. but there's nothing that pays anything mm. right this second. Um, as you move inside, there are several things that you notice. Um, one, you're familiar with the clientele here. This is kind of your spot. So, um, you see a, a table, as soon as you walk through the door, there's a table that's immediately to your left, right inside the door, that has an orc, two goblins, and a red cap sitting at it. Uh, which isn't uncommon. Like, orcs and goblins are basically been accepted into most societies, but they've they're still kept at arm's length because they cause trouble. But, mm -hmm. um... You've never seen them here before. Um, as you move further into the room, uh, there's a uh, there's Harold and Tina. They're uh, they're a couple that live just down the road. They own a forge together, um, husband and wife. Uh, they have two children that aren't here. Um, they're sitting with a uh, a turtle and a dragonborn. And they're you can as you walk in the room, they're all you can see them smiling and laughing. They're having a good time doing something. Um, to their to their right is a group of uh, um, people that are also hugged by the door. There's a paladin um, that's wearing the sigils for the Brotherhood of the Evercrystal, which is like would be like a, their version of like Torm. Um, there is a hunter uh, that's got a bow over his back, and he's sitting next to an Asimar. Uh, she's got her wings on full display, and you can tell she's had a few. And he's trying to get lucky. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Over at the primary bar, there is a, a gnome with pink hair, and she has a black leather jacket on. She's struggling to stay in her seat, and the human uh, barkeep, um, Yolanda, you know her by name, She uh, she's teasing her for not being able to, to balance properly. And uh, down at the other end of the long bar, there is an orc and a gith yankee, and they are over arguing over arm wrestling. And uh, there is a dwarf... Uh, um, it's behind the bar that's serving a beer that you've never seen before, but he's serving, and he's arguing that he can beat them both together <laughs> at the same time. Sounds good. So, this is what it looks like. Let me hit the right button. Wee. Oh, that's way too big. Definitely means there's going to be combat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So based on what you've seen, there is, uh, there's some several tables over there in the back that are empty. And uh, Barkeep throws your hands up at you. And you're like, hey, you guys doing all right? Uh, you said it's Athlanda? Yep. Yolanda. Yolanda? Yep. All right. Where did I get the two <laughs> Oh, yes, Yolanda. Um, good to see you. Uh, another fruitless day. <laughs> oh, that's, that's tough. Come on, just sit down over there. I'll bring you some. It's on me. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, this token's not supposed to be here yet. Uh, so she sits <laughs> you. Yet. She goes. Uh, she sits you guys right here at this table. All right. And um, <clears throat> she quickly brings over three big, frothy, dark-looking beers. Probably something close to Guinness. Yeah. And uh, she says, "This is what I have the most of. Nothing personal. It's kind of bitter, but it'll get the job done." And she just kind of sits down in a chair. And, um. <clears throat> plops down next to you and just sort of puts her head on your shoulder and says oh, it's been a long day I agree <laughs> any news? well we're getting a shipment up from silver for precious stones here soon security is going to tighten up over the road for the next few days you know what that means fucking soldiers they'll be in and out of here all evening they always cause trouble we never make any money 
Mm. <clears throat> Small talk will carry on for a while. Mm -hmm. She's just going to bitch about her concerns or what's coming forward. And she'll... Um, <clears throat> she'll take a, an interest if you have any stories you'd like to tell her, you know, if there's some things that are weighing heavy on your heart or, or whatever that may be. Um, she's she's genuinely probably been your friend for as long as you've been inhabiting this area. And she's pretty well known as being honest and truthful and stern when she has to be. And she's not afraid to. She's escorted dudes out of this room that were three times her size. <clears throat> Um, Sounds good. <clears throat> roll a perception check. You. Oh, that's that's a 17. Poor. <laughs> 17. 17. Nine. Nine. Uh, that's going to be an eight. An eight? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, you guys are just in, enjoying your your favorite kind of beer, which is free. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. um, you notice that uh, the two little goblins that are on the end of the room down there, they're mm -hmm. sitting with the orc, they keep looking at you, and one will say something to the other one. Mm -hmm. But they haven't stopped staring at you since you sat down. All of us are just me. Just you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys see the goblins over there? Keep eyeballing. Hmm. Hmm. Well, perhaps if you took your hood down, you wouldn't look so mysterious. <laughs> you do look pretty mysterious. Okay, throw my hood back. <laughs> <laughs> and I will unleash my glorious hair. hair. <laughs> you look over there at them, and you'll, you'll see one go, ah, and he'll you know, hit the other one, and you'll see him punch him, and then one will hand the other one a gold piece. Hmm. So, after a while, a fella stumbles into the bar. When I say stumble, I mean um, he he's probably had a few. Uh, he stumbles in, and uh, he's pretty boisterous in the way he speaks, and he says, oh, There's got the nuts for some money. Because if you got a set of balls, I can make you some. Sounds interesting. <laughs> it does. Um, I'll walk over to him and uh, probably a little messy, isn't it? He's yeah, he's a, uh, he's a little messy. Do a little press of digitation and clean him up. I'm like, so you said you needed uh, someone with balls. <laughs> Uh, they, they may be old, but they're still there. <laughs> Where's your table? Oh, right in the middle. Come join us. You see him stumble over. At, roll me uh, an inside check. No. That is not a trained skill, but that's a 17 plus. Uh, it's intelligence? Intelligence. All right, so we're looking at 21. Nice. Uh, he's faking it. Hmm. 100% pretending to be drunk. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm going to play it on. He sits down at the table, and he's a, he's, he's, a, he's a human man, roughly just short of six feet tall, uh, probably 200 pounds. Um, he's got a, a black set of uh, leather um, pants on with a set of boots that go over the top of them. Um, he's got, they're combat boots, not really boots, but they're more like combat boots. And he's got a, a black leather belt and a button-up, like a shirt under it with two pockets to either side and he's got a gray officer's duster on um, like it looks like he probably served in some sort of military unit but it looks like shit now ah. uh, was he, as you sit down he smells like fire and smoke okay um, I don't know, bro, like a, a history check or something for uh, the source of the fire like if it's a sulfur like a gunpowder sure 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 Alright. Oh, it'd be helpful if I hit the. That's uh, a 10. Uh, we're we gonna put that on. Uh, perception. Okay. Um, yeah, that'll be a 12. 12. Alright, so sure with a 12, uh, you'll. With a 12, you'll. <clears throat> it's definitely smells natural. 
it's not like gunpowder or anything like that. You don't, you don't feel like he's, uh, you feel like he's just, you know, you camp around a campfire for too camp many times. Excuse me, yeah. Whatever yeah. New character. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. The results the same. You needed a yeah. 10. Uh, so yeah, he just basically smells like he's been around a campfire for a few days. Awesome. All right. Um, so, shall we dilly dally or maybe get down to business? He, uh, he's got a hat on, like a wide brim traveler's hat. And you see him, you just kind of flick it and it pops up on the top of his head. He says, let's get down to business. I have a job that I need doing and I have some need of some guys to back me up. Um, hey, honey. How you doing? Um, where I'm going, you probably don't want to go and it'll be hell to get back. It'll, uh, the pay is well, but everything you see, uh, you'll have to forget that you ever saw it. You're not allowed to talk about it. You're never allowed to ask yourselves, each other, or me about it ever again. Those are prereqs. Well, I forget what I ate for breakfast, so <laughs> sounds good to me. Sometimes I eat the wrong mushrooms and I forget, so, you know, <laughs> it, it happens. <laughs> I'm old, I forget everything. Alright. Two. Um, after a few seconds, you see the the sort of his bearded face or whatever, his visage sort of starts to change. And you notice that uh, he's basically a he's he's had a spell, he's been keeping up like a uh, illusion mm -hmm. this entire gotcha. time. And he's he slowly over time he's dropping it. Um he introduces himself, and he says, "My name is John Holden. I'm a property owner, roughly ten miles from here. Yeah, was a property owner, roughly ten miles from here. I've served in the Dolomore for almost ten years. I have given everything that I have and hold dear to a woman. We're married and we have a son." Over the course of these 10 years, I've done nothing but send every dime I ever made home. And when I returned home, she had left me for my brother. Make no mistakes, I am headed to hurt him badly. And I'm going to hurt anyone that gets in my way badly. Fair enough. Understood. You see him. <clears throat> reaches over and he basically just kind of takes your beer away from you <laughs> it begins to drink on it so he just picks one up off the table it could have been anybody's I guess <clears throat> <laughs> screw you personally <laughs> yeah you in particular yeah. <laughs> he pushes a, uh, a small folded piece of paper across the table and uh, whoever wants to pick it up can I can't if you want me to I say I don't know where my spectacles are. Oh, my it is, <laughs> it is a, it is a photograph. This is my wife, well. Vespera Holden. Hello. Well then, I haven't felt movement like that in a while. <laughs> what do you want done with her? We'll decide that after I finish doing what I'm gonna do to mm. my brother. Fair enough. Do we know this? You see him. He, you could tell that he's 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 fighting some sort of fight inside himself. This is not. He's he's, he's set on doing it, but it's not something he actively seems like he enjoys or wants to do. <laughs> he looks over at you and says, "You owe some folks some money, don't you?" They were talking about it when I walked in. He nods toward the table with the goblins. Mm -hmm. Who gets in deep with a goblin long shirt? I don't know. <laughs> Man, that's not too good at dice. 
Anyway. <laughs> More hammers easy if you could drill sixes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Very true. Uh, quick DM note. Yep. Uh, I'm a divination wizard and I rolled a 12 and a 1 for my... Uh, 12 and a 1 for your dice. For yes. your dice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead and state that before it gets hairy. <laughs> <clears throat> um, how will your brother be armed and how many are with him great question I don't know okay do you know where they are south they took the mining train out of town I don't know how long ago best I can tell we got about a two day ride you get the station. It's down in Luxburg. Once we get there, we could take a train. I'm sure I could find... She's not a hard woman to miss. He folds the letter up and puts it back in his pocket. Or the photo. Okay. But he says, Sadly, right this second, it looks like we have other things to worry about. And he nods back over toward the go uh, the goblin and the red cap. The red cap has uh, has shifted. Now he shifts right around here to his friends. The orc looks half asleep underneath his hat. He's kind of leaned back in a chair, and he's got a long hat that's covered up his face and you can almost hear him snoring over from here out. I assume that you're friends with a uh, little barkeep over here. You want to take this outside or you want to do it in here? Sounds like a good idea. Perhaps we should take our liquor. Mm -hmm. Yes. I agree. So before, uh, before he gets up to move or anything, uh, he gets up and he extends his hand to shake it for each one of you. Yep. Yep. Shake. Nice to meet you, sir. He places a platinum piece in each one of your hands. Oh. <laughs> well, that'll certainly do. Yes. <clears throat> um, about this time... I need all three of you to make one more perception check. I'm not great at this. I know. It's a 13. It's a 6? Yes. 15. 15? What were you, Max? I'm sorry. 13. 13. If you're over your 10, you're okay. So, um, he's a little busy worried about how all of his problems are over right now. Um, <laughs> but you happen to look over Yolanda, while she's behind the bar, and she, uh, you see her look at you, and she mouths the word, says, I'm sorry. And uh, these three folks here uh, clear out quickly, followed by these four. And I mean, when I say rush through the door, I mean they rush through the door. Start getting a little bit of spider web out <laughs> in my pouch. <laughs> And these three over here sort of move to the other side of the bar. <laughs> they all grab popcorn and just fly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can we tell how they're armed? Uh, they look to be all carrying some sort of bladed weapon, except for the, the big orc that's still half asleep underneath his hat. He's got a hammer that has a spike on the end of it. Lovely. And uh, hmm. we load my initiative tracker, and it'll be time to get down. Yeah. Said he's <laughs> already got a end set up. There's gonna be combat. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's just how map functions. If there's a board for it, look out. That's not always true. <laughs> it's mostly true. It's mostly true. <laughs> Some things never change, um. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do I sense anything magical from any of them, or are they just brute? They definitely feel like they're extraordinary. Even from this distance, you don't even have to roll. There's something going on with them that feels abnormal. Can I cast Detect Magic to see if I can see what it is? Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, 21. 21. Yeah. There's a... There's definitely an aura of protection about them. You feel like a... It's, but it's like strange. It's not like a... It's not like a full abjuration, solid cleric slash paladin style protection. It's more another worldly, half put together, half cocked, maybe not even magic itself. Maybe it's chemical. Maybe it's something like that, but there's something not quite right about them. <clears throat> How can we get outside without causing a giant mess and maybe burning this place to the ground? Where is it? Directly south. That's the door. Yeah. Um. Throw the table at it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, two geezers and the gnome are going to throw the table. <laughs> or a chair. <laughs> I'd be lucky to get a piece of bread across. <laughs> What's each of your names? Vincent. Vincent. Neffin. N e f i n. Neffin. And well, Frank. Trank. That's it. I misspelled it to track. When I put player characters in my initial tracker, I put them phonetically so I don't mispronounce them. I have two different spells that can either entangle people or hold them. <clears throat> well, you see the little goblins unsheathe the knives and they begin to move toward you. So everybody roll initiative. Oh, ho, ho. Christ. <laughs> Neffin. 17. 17. Drink. One. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> well. Uh, we're going to be the squad because we rolled a three. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody at once now. And we're old. We're getting up. And for John. John gets a, John gets a 16. <laughs> oh, no. I would like to take... So Goblin 1 goes first with an 18. I hope you can't get to me. Six. He goes here, and he reaches into his belt, and he pulls out a small capsule, and he throws it on the ground, and you see it, and creates it. Begins to fill the air with smoke. Hmm. Okay. Did any of them look like they had bows or anything like that? Any range weapons? Didn't seem like it. Okay. It's first encounter. We got it simple. Kinda. <laughs> One would hope. Um, who's next? You. I want to move three back and one over. So These three. No, oh, that's the smoke radius. Yep. Vanish from sight. So you want to be where? Uh, right there. Three okay. back, one over. Two, two. Um, trying to think of a good thing I could cast. 
Um, since the smoke isn't magical, can't try to dispel it. Hmm. Hmm. I think I have to be outside for that one spell. Sure gonna do. All of you here scratching and giggling and screaming from inside the smoke. Each square is what, five feet? Yes. Um, I'm going to cast Bark Skin on myself. Okay. Do I need to roll for that? Nope. Bark Skin just happens. Alright, right, Vincent. Um, <clears throat> I'll uh, finish getting the web out of my component pouch and smeared in between my hands and I'll cast web in the middle of the uh, <laughs> uh, smoke out it's into a, the smoke yeah it's a 20 foot cube uh, I'll just try to aim for the middle okay web yeah I have that one web I do yeah hey, cool. I made more than one. Double web. Double webbed. Spider Man would be trapped. <laughs> so you're just gonna throw it into the web and it goes where it goes? Yeah, I'm aiming to throw it like in the middle. Okay. Just to uh, see what it snatches. Okay. Uh, it should be. Uh, bigger than that. It's 15 by 15. Uh, mine says 20 by 20. You want it to be bigger? God. Yeah. Is it more? Bell's a 20 foot cube. I All want right, 20 right. feet, baby. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. The 20 by 20. <laughs> and, um. Uh, so from, from inside the web, you hear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll stand up from my seat and take one step back behind the table. Okay. Perfect. Right on. All right. Who's next? The Goblin 2 is next. <clears throat> he got trapped by the web. Cool. How do you break the web? Um, so they're looking to do a strength check against my spell save DC. Which I do not remember what my DC is or where that is shown in this application. They got a he got a fifteen for the lucky roll. I don't um, know what your I don't know what your DC is. Let's see, uh, it's proficiency plus Eight plus uh, intelligence. Yep. So uh, that'd be fifteen in total. So he will weasel his way out of your web, but that goblin number one is still pinned. Let's see, he'll make it to one side. Um. Next, that's his whole turn. Basically, this is his action. The orc. Is he going to wake up? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's still asleep at the corner of the web. Red cap. One, two, five. Comes charging at John with a two-handed uh, saber that has broken teeth on one end of it with a blood stain down the side with a wicked wooden handle and a grip on the end of it. And you see him ah! and he comes over and he attempts to stab John and he uh, he rolls a two. Bad. John weaves to one side. The, the blade comes down. Uh, hacks out of the floor. He makes a second swing 
and gets a nine this time. So same thing, comes back around and John, <gasps> the blade weaves by. Uh, it's the red cap's turn. Trank. All right. Oh, since that guy's right up on us. Can I move and do an attack? Yes. I got a quarter staff. You gonna beat him to death with a quarter staff? Move me up one. It's got a range of five feet, so that's cool being side by side right there. Yeah. All right. Now I'm new at this. I understand the one D six to do damage, right? Yep. What about to hit it? To see D20. if I actually it's a D20. It's a D twenty and it's whatever your hit bonus is. It should be under your weapons in the center of the page. Oh, the... Yes. So whatever. See the plus two? That's what yeah, yeah. So that's, what, that's what you'd add to the roll. Okay. 18. You hit the red cap with <laughs> your quarter staff. <laughs> roll damage. One, two, six. Stop it. <laughs> Three. Three. Muscle wizard cast bonk. <laughs> so yeah it's about what you do you smack him in the head with your quarter staff and it's the, why they call them red caps is they they have to kill something regularly to keep their scalp wet uh with blood so i just gave him more blood yes you gave him more blood Good. so uh now he just looks like a pissed off chihuahua fair enough um i have an interesting idea if he gets back to me Top of the turn. Who's John's turn? Uh, he do yeah, he, John goes last this time. You rolled okay. one, sadly. So yes, John goes next. John will draw his pistol, and he will put one round into the red cap's face, and crits. <laughs> and the red cap doesn't have a head anymore. <laughs> Redneck. Ah, it's even funnier. Yes, it is. Um. John will cause 28 points of damage with one bullet. And he will splatter the red cap against the floor as his body falls over and goes limp. Bullets are lethal. Yep. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he spins the revolver and back and places it back in the sheath at his hip. Bye, red cap. Right, at the top of the turn, the uh, smoke fades away. Right. Who's stuck in what? One goblin got away. The other one's still stuck. Is the orc awake? No. Not yet. Not yet. He got some web on him, though. Yeah, he's got some skeet on him. <laughs> <laughs> um. Top of the turn. Goblin one. You guys want to have some fun? One, two. This is going to be one of the weirder things I've ever done in D&D. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to... Little goblin's going to move up here and... Uh, from the side of his uh, pouch on his belt, he's going to extend two pieces of bamboo that he slots together, and he's going to push a dart into it. <coughs> he's going to blow a dart at you. Mm. <laughs> uh, but not with a three. So yeah, whew, the dart goes by, and you hear somebody behind the bar. Ah! <laughs> 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 Next is Neffin. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting. Um, how does Moonbeam work indoors? That sounds uh, aggressive. All right. It the says yeah. yes, it's a 40-foot high cylinder, <laughs> uh, five-foot radius until spell ends, dim light. It, basically, you take a bunch of damage from it, and you have to mm. make a constitution saving throw. Yeah. It was that or call lightning, and I don't want to burn the place to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say that you could do it indoors. I would think that you would make because it, it doesn't magic. say that you can't do it indoors. What kind of damage yeah. does it do? Um, if I cast it at level three, it's going to be three d ten radiant. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's less harmful. So if I cast some of my spells, this whole place is going out. <laughs> yeah, you you got the heavy artillery. Okay. So moonbeam? Yeah, that's what we're looking at. I'm um, trying to figure out exactly where I want to put it. 
I don't know. Uh, what is the what's the radius on it? It is a five foot radius, forty foot high cylinder. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Give or take. I want to know if I want to hit the goblin over there and the orc. Since they can't move, they won't be able to dodge. Hmm, it's true. In a wombo wombo combo, the goblin. It's only five feet, so it's one or the other, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a five foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder. What do you want to do? Um, which one's the bigger threat? I can handle the other one. I'm more. I'm thinking about the orc or the goblin because that orc's got a big old hammer and. Wait, none you of us said a fight. forty foot cone, right? Forty forty, 40 foot, foot vertically. Oh. Vertically, <laughs> but it's only five foot diameter. Mm-hmm. Five foot radius. I mean, it's whatever. that or call lightning, and I don't feel like burning the tavern. But you can move that every turn, right? Yes, I can. Yeah, move you can it. move it around. I yep. mean, however you want to deal with it. More was this orc it. just sitting there when the goblin sat down? He's just been sleeping the whole night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's just innocent. Well, sure. I mean, he's just here. He hasn't done anything well, to he's you got yet. Nothing to do with these he doesn't guys. have a dog in his fight yet, other than he's got some web on him. Yeah. <laughs> get, uh, I'll go for the goblin that's in the webbing, then I guess. Okay. Okay. You want me to roll? He he can't dodge. You want me to roll for it? Just have- crit. Oh, it doesn't. Is it a spell attack roll? It's, uh, I think it's a saving. It's an area. So it's an, it's an area does. effect. No, it's just an area effect. I guess. You can't dodge because you roll damage. Yeah, you just right. roll damage because <laughs> yeah, he's restrained. Alrighty. So let's see. I'll cast it at level three, so that way it's three D ten radiant. Alrighty. That's five, eight, fifteen plus. Um, it doesn't get any bonuses, does it? Don't think so? No. Okay. Shouldn't. So, uh, 15. Radiant damage. And he must make a constitution saving throw. So the web's climbable? It's ghost flames. <laughs> so the, 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 focus your magic and you see the, the you know, and you, uh, everybody hears, a. Uh, as the moon being opens up and is in a this fire fiery light comes down and just and everybody hears the word or the little goblin and oh my god fuck <laughs> <laughs> he's dead <laughs> and the beam is still there so I'm just yeah it is really but he's out. he's he's he's, he's burnt no to, he's beam. burnt to he's a crispy extra crispy goblin that's now not moving underneath the whip Fair enough. Uh, next. I do what I can to help. Vincent is next. <laughs> Alright, um, I'm thinking that I would like to cast Suggestion on the uh, other goblin. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, he has to make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> goblins are known for their wisdom. Yes. Uh, twelve. Yeah, that's not gonna do it. It's not gonna do it. So uh, he's at minus one, bro. <laughs> wicked. Um, so I'm gonna say, go join your friend in the web, and we can talk this out. I will not hurt. You. <laughs> He says, I joined the man in the web. We talk. Go I not die. <laughs> go to the light, Carol. Uh, I can't. He won't go toward anything that will harm him, but oh. hopping in the web. He can't willingly walk into the lot. Yeah. 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 The web won't hurt him, though. It just nah. restrains him. So he gets to about here, and he's going to have to make a check to continue. And crits. So he'll, <laughs> he'll go, he'll, he'll go a little deeper, and he's like right on the edge, and then you see him just kind of standing there. Webbed up. Yep. He can, it gets like thick around his ankles. He's it's stuck, like he's going to exert major effort to have to move. <laughs> um, and I'll look back at Yolanda. She's peering over. And she's, she's like, 
Uh, Looking I'm up out. over the bar. Mr. Orc still asleep. Really? Yeah, his my dice is just shit. (laughs) (laughs) Please get him up. We greatly appreciate it. (laughs) Sleeper, what can we say? So next, Red Cap's dead. Thrink. All right. I just followed the instructions to make this character pretty much in the book because I never made on my own. So it told me to take magic missile. How dangerous is that in here? Oh, it's no, no not. danger. It doesn't miss. Yeah, you can't. Okay. You, you can't miss with it. It's automatic. Hit. It's automatic. Hit. All right. Yeah. You just tell us what level you're casting it at, and you roll damage. Level one. That's what I thought we were doing. Okay. okay. Well, you have access to higher level slots than level one. Yeah, right? you can cast it up to that third level. Yeah, you can be. So you, you get more missiles. Yeah. It says at higher levels when you cast a spell using a spell slot of second level or higher, the spell creates one more dart for each. So level one is three darts, so it'd be five, right? Yeah. You cast it third. third. Now remember, third level slots are limited, so be careful about using those slots early. Okay. How many do I get? Uh, it's in your two. book. Well, for uh, me, it's two. I've got well, he's got meta magic as well. I'm sure. Oh he's yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's but, probably um, better. Yeah, for me, it's two as well. Okay. But I mean, I'd say just burn a first level if you want to just. Yeah, let me do that up. first level yeah. just three. Yeah. And target him. So D twenty. Yep. Any modif- modifiers? You have your spell attack bonus. Uh, he doesn't. No, magic missile doesn't miss. Yeah, he just so rolls. He just, he just, oh yeah, he just, yeah, yeah. He just rolls damage. All right, so roll a d4 for each missile. Yeah, you're fifth level, so you should have uh, two thirds, three seconds, and four first. Yeah. Um, That's how many I've got. Is there an addition to the damage? Is it like intelligence? Yeah, uh-huh. For magic missile? No. 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 Oh, it's just, it's just cow drops. One. Okay. One for the first one. Okay. Fighting wicked. <laughs> Four. Four. So five. Need three more. Three. Yeah. Oh, past you. <laughs> this is doo, 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 in the back of his head, and you see the little goblin just go and fall forward into the moonbeam and begin to cook. Oh, shit. Well, Doesn't lie to him. <laughs> two little stubby I would not legs. Hurt him. Who's next? Uh, John. John, we'll go. One, two, five, six. It's gonna go around right here. Let's sit at the other end of the table and blast him across <clears> it. <throat> well, he's thinking the old Han Solo. He's he's, he's thinking about his <laughs> game. <laughs> Fucking Greedo. Um, Bonus experience if you draw first. <laughs> <laughs> he draws his gun and he, he points it at the orc. And he's. The orc's still asleep. Mm-hmm. And he looks back at you and he says, You think he was with him? Don't know. He'll hold his action. <clears throat> um, okay, I. Since there's no immediate, I'll walk around to the unweb side of the orc, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll try to wake him, shake him on the shoulder a little bit. Okay. See him. You see him. You see kind of one eye open, bloodshot, like he hasn't slept in several days. Sees. Oh, excuse me, sir. Um, were those your friends? And then I port to the crispy corpses. <laughs> and, while you're, and while you're talking, you see him get. And he's, just, he's as broad as you are tall. And you see him stand up and it's hot. And he. And he and this iron hammer with a spike on the end of it on the back. He says. Uh, those small fellows, were those your friends? 
He looks down and he says, Yeah. Huh. That's unfortunate. <laughs> what um, happened? I'll yell at him. Did you like him? <laughs> um, uh, uh, I'm gonna take a step back and uh, I'm just gonna let what happens happen. <laughs> you see him take his hammer and kind of come down in the palm of his hand. He says, "Who killed him?" And uh, shrug. <laughs> We just woke up too. John's, they ran out that door. <laughs> John looks at him and says, I did. You're next. And he pulls the trigger. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, 18. Hits him. I mean, he's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All I have to do is uh, four, six pain. points of damage to the orc. Oh, yeah. You're welcome to do that now. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I have to do is just go... And it's gonna cook him. And he can't get away. Cause I can just make him fail the save. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> um. So he's uh, gonna <clears throat> roll initiative for him. Wow. All right, so he's in there now. Okay. So, Neffin, top of the turn. Just move the baby marts over the orc. <laughs> <laughs> He's the kid with the uh, magnifying glass. Magnifying glass, glass over the anthill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, he's got to make a save against that. Deck save. Uh, can he do that while he's restrained? Oh, shit. That's right. He's in the damn wheel. <laughs> you pull it on one side of him. Uh, yeah, he'll have to do his own 10, turn. 11. 17. 17. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Stop killing my monsters, Jerry. We're three spellcasters. I know. If <laughs> Stay I known, away. <laughs> if I had known, I, I would have rolled something else that was melee or something I didn't know. You see him, uh, you, you singe off the first level of epidermis and what's underneath that, too. Uh, and he roars. <laughs> you know, and he uh, slams the hammer down on the table and it snaps in two. Um, Good round. You didn't kill him, but you took you took some heat on him, uh, Vincent. No, oh. oh, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just uh, I'll hang out and uh, I'm gonna hold my turn until uh, if he comes at me. I guess I'll uh, do something to defend myself. Okay. Well, that leaves the orc. It's his turn. Because Trank rolled a one. <laughs> right there. He'll spend his turn to make a streak check to break the the web. We'll make it a one. I f- had a feeling that's what you were gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> He's fighting all he can. And I'm just standing there, just out of reach. Yeah, <laughs> you're like ah. If you can see, you can see the web itself. Just like as fast as he can fight it, it's just wrapping him right back up. Uh, and then Trank, your turn. You said level one. How many times are you gonna do that? Or do I wait? To do you got it? you have four. <clears throat> you have four first level slots used once. So you have three left. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's save it. Just remember. The moonbeam will probably fry him. Yeah, we can just hang out. <laughs> it's doing its job. I guess just move me over here. <laughs> Pretty casual and right next to John. Mm-hmm. Actually, right like right here. Okay. Yeah. All right. John's turn. We'll move right here. And take another shot. 18. Or six more points. Ah, oh, he's going to live with two hit points. 
Not for long. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Deafen. <laughs> uh, beam's not moving. Yep. Uh, yeah. Roll damage. Turns on the microwave. Do we need... Wait a minute. Do we need to see if he has any orders or anything on him? That's... that's any papers? That's, that's, it seems like he's hired muscle for the debt collection. Fair yeah. enough. Beavis takes 12. 12. <laughs> <laughs> Beavis takes 12. <laughs> He is dead. Note to self, Moonbeam, pretty good spell. Moonbeam's pretty good. <laughs> Even better with web. <laughs> yeah, we gotta, we gotta, this is gonna so happen a little again, wombo but, combo. Yeah. Well, I've got call lightning, but I didn't want to do it inside the building because I'd end up burning the whole tavern to the ground. I was sitting here like, fireball, burning hands, fireball. I actually like this place though. Dang. <laughs> I had a why, chance to... Why has everybody got to build structures out of flammable materials? Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a chance to get Sleet Storm, and I didn't get it, but I should have. I might get it next uh, level up. So, um, as everything is sort of coming to a close, um, over time, you know, the web begins to dissolve. I'll yeah. turn and, off the moonbeam. Yeah, the moonbeam goes away. Um, you see, see Yolanda sort of peep up from the side of the morning says, my table. <laughs> oh yeah, he did snap the table. He did. He destroyed the table. <sighs> what a dick. We didn't even break anything. Uh, <laughs> we did good. <laughs> did they have any gold on them? Uh, no. Moonbeam went and killed them. Yeah, he did. Uh, uh, no, them. actually, the goblins have nothing on them other than what they had. The orc had quite a bit of gold on him. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm sure we could put that to use. Well, we may need to. Give her some. He had uh, nine gold pieces on. How many gold would it be for a new table? Oh, it wouldn't cost the gold for a table. <laughs> yeah, <we'll laughs> definitely give the gold to Yolanda. We'll give her one gold and be like, "This is for the table and your troubles." <laughs> Sorry about the mess. Sorry about the mess. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> so from uh, from just um, beside the door. All of you here. And the door ice is open. Oh dear. Mm. I fear. And out, outside you begin to hear the thunder of wardrobe. Well, gentlemen, um I believe to our prior note of taking our leave. Hmm. Yolanda, is there a back way out of here? Yep, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Grab my drink off of the uh, table. <laughs> Running out with a cup. <laughs> He's putting in a paper cup on your way. <laughs> Got to go cup. Uh, John leads the way out, and as you um, as you guys move outside, there is a small coalition of orcs and goblins that are have war drums outside and they're uh, screaming obscenities at the front of the bar. I don't know how much money you're in deep for, but you've made some people real mad. <laughs> um, John has a wagon that's pulled by two horses off to one side. And uh, everybody rolls stealth roll if you're trying not to be seen by guards. Oh, I'm not good at that um, either. Before we do that, <laughs> yeah. I'd like to cast... Until uh, Minor illusion. Ooh, okay. I have the cantrip from being a forest gnome. Yep. So I want to do minor illusion and have, um, let's see. Do we roll away for him to do? Well, I already rolled in chat. It's a natural 20. Let's go, chat. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. 13. Ooh. 20. Or, oh. Uh, for the stealth, that'd be 18. Jesus. Um, even even John did good, 16. <laughs> I want to do Minor Illusion and make a sound behind them. Kind of sound. Like a, a really loud bang with a light. Like, it, like something exploded behind them. Okay. So off in the distance, you hear... Big flare of light, and it, it almost looks like a fireball goes off, but it's not real. It's just light and magic, pyrotechnics kind of thing. And you see all of them go, 
<laughs> you know, and uh, they, John says, "Come on!" And you know, you take off running for the wagon. Uh, as you do, you notice that uh, it's hard to miss because it's lit up by torches. Um, out in front of the the bar, there is a big war wagon that these orcs have, and there is a massive, super fat orc that is sitting in the center of it with goblins hanging <laughs> off the two ends of it. And uh, you see several of the small goblins jump up on the side of the wagon. And there's two of the sleepy orcs <laughs> that are <laughs> on the back. And uh, as John peels out of town, screaming with his wagon and two horses, you hear uh, the fat orc on the... He <laughs> says something incomprehensible. And uh, they begin to pursue you. Lovely. Now, Nephilim, what exactly have you gotten us into? <laughs> What I've been I? beginning to wonder that myself. <laughs> well, I thought I would distract him and we would get out of Dodge. <laughs> we were referring to Or Iron, Iron Mail, I should say. Now, this uh, war wagon that's carrying the fat orc, you said there was some powder on it? That's a flammable? <laughs> There's stuff on it. Mm. Wouldn't it be a shame if somebody was to cast call lightning right down on that um, <laughs> explosive material. Yeah, that wouldn't give us away at all. As you're tearing through the countryside on the wagon over the course of a few minutes. Uh... Oh man, that, I like it. <laughs> Ooh. Medieval spy hunter. This looks like something from Age of Sigmar mm. and I love it. Um... <laughs> Each turn, uh, John will roll a John will roll a driving roll because John is driving the wagon. Mm -hmm. um, if he does well, you can pull a square, or five or ten feet ahead. If he does poorly, you will go backwards. Hmm. I'll make a check for the war wagon as well. Okay. The whole wagon goes on a single turn. So, everybody roll initiative again. Uh, that is an eight. Three. Wonderful. I'm getting better. Nevin. Seven, <laughs> 17. 17 for Nevin. Eight for Vincent. Yes. And a what for you? Three. Nowhere to it's go. Like but three times from here, bro. That's, that's like three times better than you did last time. That is true. That's true. Wow. That, that's some serious multiplication. <laughs> War wagon goes first. So, piloting chip. All right, he does. He, he rolls a ten, so he breaks even. So he doesn't move. <clears throat> so, the two goblins that are off, that are hanging off either side, um, are going to fire bows upward toward you. So four shots. Um, we're going to fire two of those at um, Neffen, and the other two will head toward Trank. I'm behind him. <laughs> That's fine. You can put them at me. There's a five and a six. So nothing's going to hit you. All right. And uh, Trank. Oh, they do much better against Trank. 18, uh, mm -hmm. 19. <laughs> <laughs> That's just... That's Will Luck, right? There. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Warhammer, Call of Duty, yeah. Uh, this is a plus four. Don't so. gamble. Ever. <laughs> You're going to do 11 points of damage to you total. <clears throat> against uh, <clears throat> I hit points? Yes, against your hit points. You should yeah, have, I don't think you've leveled yeah, up. Yeah, you haven't leveled up. You have way more hit points than that. That's what I was thinking. Uh, but yeah. I showed you this. Yeah, because you know, like, that's cool, that's cool. For a base, you still have to level it up. It like Isn't a D8 for uh, sorcerer? D6. Is it D6 mm -hmm. as well? Okay. Um, so the average would be four. What's your constitution modifier? Modifier is two. You have a plus two to con? Modifier to constitution, yeah. Oh. Very nice. I am an old fart, so I just took a zero. <laughs> <laughs> it means he would average six per level, so six times five. I mean, right, right there's 30. Uh, well, the first one would be six, so add two more. Add two. The 32. 32. Minus yeah. how many you just said before? 11. 11. Right. 21 now. 
the, the fat goblin in the center will uh, raise a bloated staff into the air and this green energy crackles off of it. And as he does, he goes, and he holds it forward and he'll cast lightning bolt. Okay. <laughs> Sheesh. What is it that's pulling the wagon? Some sort of horned beast. Yeah, that's that's not good. Oh, he's gonna come up short. Uh, and he's probably gonna cook those two goblins in front of him too. But he doesn't care. This range, so one, two. I three, thought the range four, was like six, seven, 150 eight, feet. Two. For light, oh no, the range of fireball is shorter than it is for the lightning bolt is according to him. For him, it's 60 feet, but his is special. Oh, okay, because yeah, fireball is 150 feet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 10, 15, 20. We won't make it. So yes, lightning crackles out. Uh, just absolutely fucking annihilates these two goblins <laughs> <laughs> sitting, sitting on front of him. <laughs> and uh, we'll tickle the back of your wagon as you see smokes and flame come off the back where it touches it, but not enough to cause significant damage. It doesn't do anything to the two things pulling the wagon? No, they don't care. He goes over their head. Okay. And then the orc, the sleepy orc in the back. He's not asleep, though. Um, you'll see him. Uh, you won't see him, but you'll hear something go, Ooh! and there's like a, you'll see this orb fly up in here. See if he hits. He does with a 20, modified 20, though. But it's a bomb. Um. Dang. I was going to say, is there any way that like shield could affect that at all, or is it just going to happen? Yeah, it's area of effect. Okay. Find a template for it. There it is. It's going to hit right here. Hmm. <clears throat> so, you three, make a dexterity set. I'm great at those. <laughs> I know. Casters are so great at dexterity set. Um, I'll use the 12... <laughs> Okay. So it'll be a 12. All you need is 10. 17. Okay. 17. It's the 7 I rolled. Did you do bad? Yeah, I did bad. You get your, plus your dash bonus, whatever it is. Oh, fuck. <laughs> did bad. Uh, that's not a great damage roll, though. Only 6 points of damage. Uh, if you pass your deck save, you take nothing. I'm going to have to cure wounds on him. Um, so he's just taking 17, so I'm going to have to cure him. Next is Neffin. Okay. And only get one action. Yes. <sighs> Poor bastard. I what? can't let him die. Uh, Why not? It's fine. <laughs> I, think I, I think I can handle a decent amount of what we're dealing with if you want to make sure he doesn't die. Okay. Max, Max about to fireball the fuck out of his way. <laughs> so, <laughs> back one up, sulfur. I'm gonna cast uh, <coughs> cure wounds on Trank. It's a D8 plus. It's gonna stitch you up. Spell cast. Thank you. D8 plus spell casting, which would be six. Nine. Thank you. Nine points. Big, big really numbies. Wanted, really wanted to do wind wall, but <laughs> hey, if the fireball doesn't work out, wind wall doesn't sound like a pretty decent choice. Well, call lightning is funnier, but yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> uh, you can move around a little if you want to. If you want to hang off the side of the wagon or something, you can't. Whatever you want to do. Hang off the side of the Why wagon. Why would you not want to? It's heroic yes. as fuck. Yes. <laughs> no, you can't. Uh, whatever you want to do. It's heroic um, as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> heroic as fuck. Uh, yeah, I'll hang off the edge of the wagon there beside me. Okay, make an acrobatic shit. Oh, God. 
Never mind. No, 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 don't you worry. You don't want to hang out the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, though. I mean, you tempted him with a good I mean, time. I, think I did. Don't gnomes get a bonus He that? fell for it. Anyway. <laughs> All right, Vincent. All right, so, like I said, <laughs> ball and bat bueno, a little bit of sulfur. I'm going to cast uh, Fireball just right in the middle on the big dude. <laughs> it's a 20-foot sphere, so yes, it it's pretty much just going to catch everything. In yeah, there. it's going to be nice. Oh, maximum. Damage. So they are needing to make a, a dex save. Yeah, dex save uh, versus a 15. Oh, Jesus. oh, it's much bigger. Yeah, it's bigger than that. I <laughs> like <laughs> that's much bigger. All right, so. 20 there's... foot radius or diameter? Uh, radius. That's, <laughs> that's 40. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Ooh. 10 it's, it's for the be first eight two. Yeah. yeah, it'll That's be 8 eight flips across. One, two, three. Good Going Lord. to 22 and 29 so, points of damage. <laughs> That's basically everything, including the beast pulling it. Yeah, and even <laughs> if they make the save, they still take half. Damn. That's a big-ass circle. Yeah. yeah. Anything there flammable? <laughs> let's draw <laughs> some saves. Let's draw some saves. All right, it's a big guy. Um, negative two to his save. Uh, Eleven. So he's gonna take that damage. Mm -hmm. Twenty nine. Uh, <laughs> little goblin hanging off to the left rolls a ten. He's dead. Little goblin in the front rolls a one. He's super dead. Trampled <laughs> under. <laughs> little goblin off to the right. Uh, rolls a two. He's also super dead. <laughs> and then the one to the far right toward me uh, rolls a 19, but he's still dead. <laughs> <laughs> the damage killed him, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Where's this in? big uh, mountain of flames just engulfs the whole wagon. <laughs> and uh, yeah, all four goblins just take it to the face. How about the, uh, big uh, dude in the, back. the creatures pulling? Uh, the creatures pulling are actually immune to fire damage. You'd have to be. To... Oh, no. <laughs> well, what did you get into? Me? It was him. <laughs> uh, Maybe the one, he's the, one of the gambling the or, problems. The I orc in the you. back. It was? You. Why are you going to keep looking at you? You didn't say me. It's not you. Is <laughs> <laughs> it me or him? It's you. I thought you looked at him. It's you. Oh, Trank got us into this. That. Trank's the one that got you into it. <laughs> Dang, Trank. Damn it. I don't gamble. He missed like two payments on his AARP. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> How much damage did the big dude in the back take that was through the uh, He passed his check. He rolled a 19. So he'll take half. Um, okay. Or 15 then? Yeah. He lives. He's not happy about it, but he lives. <laughs> he ain't happy. Oh, okay. Fireball also ignites flammable things. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Wagons are made of wood and very flammable. Uh, boom. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff was. Yeah. He has a wagon in half. He says three. He's got three bombs in the back, and they they're all gonna detonate. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Uh, first one maxes its damage. The second one does poorly, and then the third one does pretty poorly too. Uh, so the wagon overall is now short that whole rear compartment. <laughs> And does the orc manage to survive? That's a good question. No. Uh, <laughs> very much no. So the grand total after the fireball and all that is he's going to come up to just short of 90 points of damage. <laughs> that, is, that is one orc that just went screaming to the other side. Witness me, Mad Max. <laughs> yeah. Just like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was far more than I intended. <laughs> So yes, in a, in a an actual display, of, uh, is there is just detonation after detonation, and everybody sees the whole back of the war wagon lift off the ground and then sit back down. <laughs> <clears throat> oh wow! So the big orc is the only one left. He's the only one left. Act. The uh, creatures pulling him. Are they immune to shrapnel? Uh, there was explosion. Yeah, there were, up their they, assholes. They, they wouldn't have. Uh, they wouldn't have taken any. The big, if it, anything, if anybody took it, it'd been the big orc. He's uh he's big enough to shield them. I'm trying to think outside the box. <laughs> he's like, throw me a bone. 
Trank, your turn. Alright. Well, magic missile, I guess. I am range. You have any other. 20 feet? No, don't. Nothing will help here. Any Uh, other offensive spells? Yeah. Ray of Frost, Shocking Grass, but those aren't within range. Chat says that's some weak ass goblins. <laughs> <laughs> that's typically how it goes with goblins. <laughs> They're not known for their amazing constitution. So I guess the missile. They all are known for dying horribly. Yeah, and quickly. Well, he's got some magic missile getting ready to sh- get shoved up his. And that's the only thing left, the big guy? Yeah. And you say it automatically hits? Yeah, you don't have to roll. You just roll dice. You roll dice. That's it. Yeah, roll yeah. dice. Three. Three. How many was it? Four? Uh, yeah, first level was three. One. And four. Eight? Four. Eight total. Very good. <clears throat> okay. So, yes. Um... Um, magic missile flies out. You hear the dart scream through the air, and as you doo, 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 you see the orc. Mm-hmm. 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 All right, top of the turn. John's gonna roll for driving the wagon, and it fails. Oh. Doesn't do badly, badly, but does enough to um, back you up a couple squares. No, no. And then the healed uh, port man went piloting for the wagon. Uh, doesn't do very good, but does better than average. So he gets to slot up one. Well, well. And, uh, John will look back and, or yell back and say, Are we losing him? <laughs> Quite the opposite, Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan. Top of the turn, it's big orc. What are you gonna do, Goody? These guys have been giving you troubles. They set your they set your thing on fire. Got a few things we can do. I'm gonna have to light this boy up. So he's going to um, hold up his staff again, and this green lightning comes down and cracks at it. And you'll see him, and he'll you know, hold it out. And uh, when he does, the earth for him cracks open and begins to move toward you. Oh, that's not good. Mm. <clears throat> oh, shit. Fisher. Fisher. It's a one hit KO in Pokemon, so that's not good here either. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so this really isn't anything that you guys can avoid. This is this is on John to outpilot this. So it'll be versus his uh, dexterity to avoid it. And his He rolls up nineteen. So he does really well. So the Fisher comes up and everybody feels the wagon <gasps> as it kinda he goes in and begins to slam around. And uh, John cracks the reins and manages to scoot up in front of him <clears throat> uh, for his bonus action. Uh, the big orc will slam his staff on top of the uh, on top of the wagon, and as he does, everybody hears a boom, just a loud sort of dummy sound. Um, Since we're all casters, can we figure out what that was? Uh, if you want to burn an action to do it, you can. Nevin, it's your turn. 
I'm going to have to call lightning on him. <laughs> it's like that, huh? Directly on him. There's there's no way around it. Okay. So. Call lightning's a big one. Yeah. It's the um, 10 foot tall, 60 foot radius. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's a big one. <laughs> it's the big one. Probably immune to lightning 60 too. 60 foot radius? Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's a fucking, big old... It's fucking oh, huge. Oh, is it storming outside? It's not. No. Oh, it's it's actually a clear night. I get a bonus. Uh, get bonus to average if it is. Okay, here we go. So he's got to roll a deck save, doesn't he? Yes, he does. That's... Oh, well, that one, he's not. <laughs> so, 15. You roll a one? I roll a one for Texas. I'm a big boy anyway. Yeah. Wow, did he luck out. Seven. <laughs> Seven points. Uh, so, you, the lightning comes down, you know, comes down from the sky and crashes into him. And as it does, um, you see it, it reflects off this green dome and arcs into the woods. Ah. Okay, he's got a shield. Okay. Hmm. Vincent. Uh, Firebolt. All right, bolt him. Uh, that is only a two. <laughs> I did take lucky, so I'm going to roll for the lucky. And that is... A seven, but <laughs> adding um, efficiency and intelligence that put me up to a fourteen. Fourteen? Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't get it. All right. I believe that's a D ten. Yep. Does it increase on? Uh, hey, what's up, Lava? Welcome, to chat. Let's see. Well, at fifth level, it's 2d10. Okay. Seems irrelevant. Uh, that's going to be uh, nine points of damage. Nine points. Okay. So you uh, cast the, the bolt. Bolt streaks across, you know, like a bottle rocket. Mm -hmm. And uh, strikes. Uh, it strikes him. And, like, you can actually see, like, the, the big green dome that he's under. A uh, hole opens up in it. He lets it in. And it uh, strikes him, and as it does, he, poof, you see his skin burn, and then you see him kind of grin. And the flickers the flickers of the ember off of the firebolt begin to pull into his staff. Oh. Uh, I'm going to start crawling up to the front with uh, Jonathan. <laughs> 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 we need to go faster. That was my idea. Okay, we've got an interesting one. Drank. The shield still up? Yeah. The missile ain't gonna go through it, is it? It's all the the missile right always hits. Oh, That's all I got. You got other spells? <clears throat> Nothing that range. No. Three? Three? One. Six. Two. Oh, yeah, six total. Six total. So, uh, yep. Magic missile streaks through the air again. You see it slam into the dome. And as it does, there's a... And these little green crystals go flying off behind it. Okay. Uh, top of the turn. John's going to make a roll for the horses. Uh, rolls good. Really good, actually. Pull ahead, too. Got an idea. Well, oh, Bork did really good, too. Um, if I throw Entangle on the mounts pulling his wagon, will that sudden stop throw him off the wagon? Well, it would certainly keep the wagon from moving forward. <laughs> I'm going to try and cast Entangle on the, uh, basically Entangle on them. 
on the mounts that are pulling the uh, the wagon. Okay. He gets to go first. He's higher than you in initiative. I was just throwing <clears throat> oh, okay, that okay, out okay, there. Okay. That's what I want to do. <clears throat> No, I can't prepare for it. And I'm kidding. Because if he's got, if he's got <laughs> shields and all kinds of crazy stuff that he can do, if we take out his mode of mobility, then he won't be able to chase us. Um, he is going to uh, slam his staff down on top of the uh, on top of the wagon deck three times, and it barks this green energy that surrounds all of the wagon and everything, and he casts in large. Boom, boom. Yeah. Enlarge on the wagon? Yes. <clears throat> oh, that's totally gonna get entangled still. Yeah. <laughs> yes, guess. it's getting entangled. <laughs> Why'd you have to say it so early? <laughs> Ask that on your turn. <laughs> He actually, like, when the wagon is huge now, and it actually looks the proper size for him. <laughs> because he's so blubberous. So this whole time he's been like a bear at the circus. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, not to mention that thing is going to be faster. Yep, because these mounts are digging deeper now. That's his turn. Neff. You said the shield is gone? Yep. Want me to moonbeam the bastard? Yeah, whatever you want to do. <laughs> but when you do that, won't it? Oh, hit. It'll hit him and then it'll move behind him and I'll have to bring it forward again. Yeah. So technically when you do it, it'll just stay there. In that one spot where I threw Until it, yeah. you turn and you bring it back forward. Where's an immovable rod when we need one? Immovable rod? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be perfect. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to decide between trying to entangle the mounts or just calling the moonbeam down on him. And entangle on the mounts, the way it works, it's a strength saving throw or mm -hmm. they're restrained. Well, they've got to be strong because they're pulling the damn wagon. Yeah. They're very strong. They're very strong. So Entangle's probably not going to work in this situation. And I've already blown my make them fail, so, yeah. Um, it's either Moonbeam or Call Lightning again. I mean, if the shield's down, Call Lightning sounds like it's going to be pretty dangerous. Call Lightning it is. <laughs> Call Lightning it is. All right. It's a deck uh, save for him. Eight. Uh, he gets a 10, 12 for a 18. Oh, no. Okay. So he takes 18 points? No. I have rolled the damage yet. <laughs> no, you don't have you, to You don't have to roll a hit with that. It's just, oh. a, it's just an area of effect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Oh, God, you bastard. Um, oh, that's better. 22. 22. It's much better. How much do you have left? He had 19 left. <laughs> and he failed his deck. like, damn it! You suck my battleship. <laughs> okay. So yes, Call Lightning comes down, and you see him. Oh! And he sort of slumps over. Um, Does the wagon stop? No. Hmm. They don't know he's dead. It's like, it's like Dead Man's Hand. Oh, no. <laughs> um... But they do shrink. They go back down to size because that was his spell. Do, 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 do. speed. Wait a minute. I didn't do it. Now, is this the orc that he owed money to? Uh, he didn't owe money to an orc. No. I don't know who I owed money to. <laughs> Up to a few minutes ago, I thought he owed him money. No. <laughs> no, he's a dwarf. Oh, a dwarf money. Yep, you owed a dwarf money. A dwarf that has ties with orcs and goblins. The unsavory kind. Oh, that dream. Oh, I still owe a dwarf money somewhere. Yep. Because <laughs> we haven't seen a dwarf yet. Or we would have fried it. Not to mention, we just saved him a lot of money. Now he doesn't even have to pay them. <laughs> Very true. Thank um, you. Thank you. 
Do you think we should try to get on the war wagon and loot him? He might have something important. Or get over there and stop the beasts that are pulling it. So that we can loot it properly. Might have something useful. That staff had all kinds of interesting things. Can you say this conveniently after your turn? <laughs> this reminds me of a, a story about a bald man and family. John says, I'll shoot you if you don't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. At this point, he's like in full gallop. He's trying to control horses while weaving, you know, through, right. around rocks and trees and things. I have no interest in trying to uh, jump from one moving wagon to another. Mm. 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 Might have useful things. Oh, if so you, you would be so bold, you're, te you're, te you're technically out of combat. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Can oh, John get us really close to it so it won't be a crazy dex check? Yeah, he could probably get you pretty close. He's fairly good with horses. Apparently, yeah. Rare frost do anything to slow them down, or is that just damage? It does slow things down. Oh, yeah, actually. Reduced by 10 feet into the spring. Oh, wow, so I should take that. You hear cackle. I can do that, but it's just going to slow it down. It's not going to stop it. So we would have to get onto the wagon and, and pull the reins and make them stop? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they're very single-minded beasts. You give them a command, and it's basically autopilot. Hmm. Uh, oh, I have an idea. What? Perhaps I could uh, will them. Um, uh, try casting suggestion on one of the beasts. Sure. I don't know how you're. I mean, this is gonna be interesting. How are you going to suggest to a beast when they can't understand your language? Uh, that tree well, looks really. Really uh, I guess. You should run into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's look at the suggestion. It's a very beautiful looking tree. You should try to mate with it at high speed. We yeah. see it. And the other beast. What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. Right, suggestion. Can you suggest an activity <clears throat> limited to a sentence or two, or two and magically influence a creature you can see? Uh, that can hear and understand you. Well, that's where it gets interesting because I don't know if they can. Uh, and these look like uh, some sort of hell oxes or something. Yeah, yeah, they're they're pretty nasty things. They uh, they understand uh, two things: uh, food and pulling that rain. Would either one of you uh, know the infernal? time for heal? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> no, sir. Common gnomish elvish, that's what I know. Well, um... Yes, I can... If he, if he can get us up beside it, I'll try and jump on it and see if I can pull on the reins and make him stop. You'll, uh, you'll hear John from the front of the wagon. He'll say, Need to make up your mind quick! Hard turn up here. Wait a minute, if it's a hard turn, will they just keep going straight? Yes. Probably. Take the turn. Yeah. <laughs> We're not doing the wagon jump. Okay. Ah, yes, this is funnier. Watch them smash into a bunch of stuff, and then the orc's body will get thrown off. <laughs> All right. We can handle that. Mm hmm Which it's bad I'm not playing my Always from is. the last campaign. He probably could have jumped that. Anyway. <laughs> there were some Matrix things going on. There were. Alright, so um, you see John uh, working the reins and as he does the, there's a barrier it comes, uh, the road kind of flattens out into like a small dip and then there's a hill and it cuts hard left to go straight up the side of a hill. And uh, John, let's see if he makes it. I'm sure he will. Yeah, he does fine. See us, John. <laughs> Tokyo. Can we all die? <laughs> it would. It wouldn't have killed you, but it would have hurt a lot. <laughs> so he's in Tokyo drifts this wagon <laughs> across uh, sideways through this and this, and they just keep going. 
and they go off uh, the side of one of these hills and crash down into a few trees in a, in a gully down below. And all of you hear a... Uh... And some green energy go up in the air. Pop. Hmm. Your race is... Whoa! John slows yeah. the way. Yeah. Okay. So, can we go... See what all's left of the war wagon, I take it? Sure can. And the orc, such as he is. So, um, down you go. So you you move back over to where the war wagon went off the edge, um, and it's just a broken heap down at the bottom of a small gully. And when I say it's easily scalable to get down there, um, and you see why the road turns now. <laughs> I, I hesitate to call it a, a cliff because it's only probably ten or fifteen feet up, but it was enough to where you're not going over that. <laughs> um, the the two beasts are they're still kind of moving off of one side but their bodies are shattered um they're quickly getting like there's ash beginning to fill the air um the wagon the wagon's basically on fire like there's bits and pieces of it that are flame are going up and uh the big orc lays off to one side and bisected at the waist and you see in trails and the other half a little further down I pat Nephilim on the back and say, well, how about it? Um, the staff, is it still there? Parts of it. Part. Can I cast Detect Magic on the parts of the staff? Yes. Um, roll a Arcana check. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, so you find most of it. Um, the magic quality about it is depleting rapidly. Um, but it is, you do find the majority of the structure of itself. I'd say it's 90% here. You could, mm. if you had men, you could probably get it back together. What type of staff? Bone. Can I tell what kind of magic it used? Um, yeah, roll another arcana for me. That's a different kind of check. You were looking before, now you're going to try to figure out the school. No, I know nothing about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be in fact, I'm not it's entirely sure that it's a whole party full of casters. Somebody will figure out something, I'm sure. Yeah. Enter. Um, never hurts to... Uh, Let's have the pieces. John slides down the embankment behind you. You see the wagon and the horses tied off at the top. <clears throat> he says, Gorefist, what'd you do to piss him off? He don't come down off his mount for nothing. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> And clearly, you've hired the right men for the job. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> I'd like to get the piece. Put them in a box or something. You could take Gorfus, you know what, and put it in a box. Got a hole in the box. <laughs> Make her open the box. Make her open the box. <laughs> <laughs> Step one. <laughs> Got a hole in the box. Um... Hey, thanks, Danius. Danius says he thought the animated stuff on the map was really cool. Oh, no, that's cool. <clears throat> Does the um, orc have any gold on him or anything? <laughs> What's he got? Give me a shit. <laughs> well, I, mean, I just want to know, we like, know if we see gold coins thrown about the crown was the goblin. <laughs> he's the, yeah, he's the leap goblin. <laughs> um, so there's... Orcs don't trade in gold. 
Is there anything of value? To them, yeah. No. They, they need teeth. Oh yeah, teeth. Teeth is currency to work. Tooth for the tooth god. Yes. <laughs> vitally important. Vitally important. <clears throat> um, you do find around one of his fat, gelatinous fingers a ring of protection. Which one of you would like to have it? You're going to have to get it off first. <laughs> we, can it we can cut it off. That's not... Too- it's the size of a Coke can. <laughs> uh, that looks gnarly. Try to mage hand it. Just wear it around your wrist. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll it'll adjust to size. The magic yeah, ring, magic ring is there. Get it. I'm okay. Give it to one of them. Okay. Make an athletics check to hack at this thing's wrist, their <laughs> finger. Ugh. Nineteen. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know what you guys are so worried about. <laughs> it's off there. Uh, yeah, as soon as you, uh, as soon as it comes off his finger, it just goes and it shrinks down to size. Well, everybody's trying to kill you. You, you probably so. need the ring. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll hand him the ring. It's like he needs it more than the rest of us. I'll agree. He does seem to be the person of interest. But I don't know who I stole. Come on. Up to the top of the ridge, there's a place off to the right. We can make camp. Okay. If he's down, war riders will be seen. Oh, this night sounds better and better. <laughs> he says, you shook my hand. Right. You're not the one I'm worried about. <laughs> it's the ones that I brought along with me. <laughs> so you can all climb back in the wagon. He'll, uh... About another 30, 45 minutes of travel, something like that. And uh, he kind of like off the main road, um, he just sort of cuts into the forest. And after 10 minutes or so, there's just a clearing that looks like it's had a small fire pit in it. And there's places in the ground that's been worked. So like if you had to grow a, grow a small crop here and kind of survive off the grid for a hot minute, you could. So this is sort of commonplace for criminals. Okay. This is sort of what you do when you're laying low for a while. Uh, so he <laughs> happens to know right where one of these little spots is. Mm-hmm. He uh, tends to the horses. And he says, I uh, suggest y'all make camp. I'm going to get the horses took care of. Sounds good. Yeah, make camp. We need to get some grass. So uh, <laughs> after the horses are took care of, they he comes back over and sits down and puts his back up against the tree and you see he uh takes his hat off and he puts it down beside him and uh he just he looks tired didn't realize thrilling heroics would be this early (laughs) what'd you need that money for what do I need the money for? Yeah, what'd you need it for? Everyone needs money. I understand that, but okay. you... I just need the money. They sent Gorfist down here. He's sort of a warlord. Sort of was. <laughs> <laughs> he chuckles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, lot of, a lot of men have died underneath that boot of his... You did a good thing. More Gorfish. Yeah. You did it good. Gorfish is gone. There's going to be more. Yes, there could possibly will be more. There's going to be, just when you put down one, there's another that rises up and takes its place. Sometimes two. Yeah. Anyway. Works. Take us about three days to get down to Luxburg. I suggest you get some sleep. Road's gonna be long and arduous. I'd like to uh, see if I couldn't get some of the small animals in the area to kind of fan out near where we came in. So that way, in case anything comes into the clearing, 
You want a squirrel alarm? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Roll an animal handling check. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. So you um. Yeah, you get quite a few around. Um, more little rodents than anything. There's some field mice and stuff around. And That's fine. And some squirrels and a few other things. But yeah, yeah, they, after a small, lengthy, chirpy conversation, all of you, he's probably done this a thousand times, so you know what he's doing. <laughs> and he uh, moves outward, and um, they take their place and guard you, effectively. <clears throat> after roughly 10, 15 minutes, every woman can hear these slow... I'm gonna snoring with John underneath the head. Hmm. Wanna take turns on watch? Um Sure. Go I ahead. will take watch. First one. Okay. Uh, I'll have Nigel do my watch. And uh, uh, uh from under my sleeve a uh, uh, celestial looking spider uh, comes out. You guys are should be familiar with it, but I know that I'm just now introducing yeah. it through my familiar. It's a spider. It's a spider. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like a normal sized spider or like a big ass spider? Like kind of tarantula. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Something that'll wake you up if it wants to wake you up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it when it's on you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nigel was happy to keep watch. Oh, yeah cool thing about uh, familiars. <clears throat> Alright, let's see. Um, first watch, no incident. You casters that need the, the long rest to reset. Oh, so, yeah. Suffer no ill fit. Um, who's on second? I can be. Okay. Is that... I think gnomes can take a shorter rest. Well, I've always considered resting just being at ease. Right. So, like, you know, you get your eight hours rest even if you have to keep watch during it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> during your rest at about one in the morning, um, you see John over off to one side and he's having some sort of nightmare or so that you think he's twitching and turning in his sleep and uh, mumbling something uh, about dragons can't figure out what it is but it's something he talks about wings and mountains and things like that <clears throat> um, lovely yeah <laughs> can I roll a history check to see if I remember anything Involving dragons and mountains. Sure. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, the only one that comes to mind is Dragon's Pine Mountain, which is way south. Like, way, way, way south. It would take weeks to get there. Uh, and it's Dragon's Pine Mountain is right on the edge of a region called Dolom. And Dolom is basically a war zone. And it's, it's there. It serves as a staging point for attacks that... All of the other rage on chromatic dragons. So, if you know anything about, if you've ever served in Dolom and you've, you know, waged campaign against Dragonspine Mountain, it's pretty damn dramatic. Okay. Because that's what you would gather from what he, you know, the things that he says. But he uh, was there. Yeah. Okay. That kind of thing. He's like a vet with PTSD. Okay. After some time. Um, he wakes up and he's, you know, he's, you know, he's got, he's in a cold sweat and he, he sees you over there by the fire and he says, go ahead. I got it. Yep. He walks over to the horses, pats them. Morning comes. Everybody gets a good night's sleep. John, uh, all of you smell breakfast in the morning. John is making what just he brought some things but not a lot um there were some breakfast things on his wagon just a few eggs and a, a handful of sausage some bacon he offers to share it with you not a whole lot maybe a handful of food for each of you but 
Well, thankfully I'm a gnome. We don't eat too much. Right. I could turn out bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. Thank you. And, uh, he'll look at each one of you and he'll be like, so what's your story? Uh, well, um, uh, not much to it. I spend most of my days reading and learning and reading more. Uh, it started to feel like I was reading my life away, so I took on adventure and came across these two once they found their ways out of their solitude. Mm. Solitude. Mm. I know a little about that. How about you, a little bit? Well, um... My father was a druid. His father before him was a druid. Uh, we protected the forest uh, southeast of here for a long time. And um, then some orc and goblin raiders came through and burned down part of the forest. And I chased after them. And been chasing them ever since. And um, you hear... Keeping them out of the woods, huh? Yeah, you... You hear a noise and um, a badger kind of shows up beside him. You guys have seen the badger before, but the badger looks like he's talking to him. And yeah. you see John look at the badger and he's like, pay good money for that pelt. Uh, sadly, not for badgers. this one. The uh, the badger starts to squeak really loud. It's like, no, 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 no. Yet. No, we can't kill him. He hired us. Just, just calm down. John Gilbert, says what? Gilbert, Dr- calm down. And draws Gilbert, his pistol. Gilbert, calm down. <laughs> Gilbert, calm down. I apologize. Gilbert, Gilbert, Gilbert is very um, aggressive, <clears throat> and um, anytime anybody even mentions orcs and goblins, he uh, gets riled up. I, I need to calm him down. My G money bags. I well, like my padres there. I permit. Spend many days on permitting away <laughs> from people, cities, people, and things. And I decided, like my compadre here, decided to go on a life of adventure. Fortunately, apparently, I have made enemies along the way. Well, things happen. Yes, they do. Fortunately. Um, about, uh, about this time, um, you're talking about your permitting. Um, everybody hears a whistle overhead. Um, and it's sort of, it's not like necessarily like a bird or anything. It just sounds like a, sort of like you can carve arrows with flutes in them to Mm -hmm. where they make whistles when you shoot them. And, uh, just, just on the other side of the horses in the side of a tree, there's a and the arrow lands in it. One of yours? Mm, I mean, one of mine. He's a druid, right? Yeah. He gets up, you know, kind of quickly, starts surveying his surroundings. Okay. Um. Do I, do I see anything? No, not right off hand. A roll perception check? Sure. <laughs> Too bad. Throw to one. Oh no. Yeah, you you, you don't see anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ready to have cast wind wall. <laughs> John makes his way over to the arrow uh, that's stuck in the tree, and there is a piece of parchment that's wrapped around the shaft with a note tied to it. And uh, he removes it and begins to read the parchment to himself. And it's addressed to uh, to Trank. And 
it'll say Core Fist is settled. Be or so. Don't come back. Okay. Signed by. It's not. Good. No more gambling. Yay. Hey, don't worry about that. Learn my lesson. Until <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> John removes the arrow from the tree and brings it over to you and hands the arrow to you. He says, this don't look like druidic whittlery to me. It's sort of, um, it's much more elven in design. The arrow or the note? The, uh, the arrow itself. Can I roll? I do a perception check on the letter to see if I recognize anything. Sure, sure. Five. It's uh, there's there's words on there. There's words. <laughs> um, <laughs> investigation on the arrow itself. On the arrow itself. Sure. Well, not that. Off into the darkness. Oh, of course I roll an 18. <laughs> <laughs> when it don't matter. 17. 17. All right, so the, the arrow in itself is... Um, it's it's The outer shell of it is maple. Inside is bamboo, like it's been cored. And there's a bamboo core on the inside of it. This is done for structural integrity, but lightweight. And the outer shell is veneered together to give it the appearance of looking natural, even though it's not... This is an assassin's weapon. You would you would use this if you want to kill somebody from a distance very quietly. It would pierce deep and it would hurt a whole lot. And if it managed to hit an artery, you'd bleed out fast. Fast. I politely tell Trank that um, yes, we really need to not gamble ever again. Never again. Um. While they're doing that, like for Nigel to come back to me, and like Nigel, did you see anything? Yeah, can I roll a reception for Nigel? Sure. You'll hear him go. <laughs> okay, uh, that's a fourteen. Or I'm not sure what to add for the familiar. Uh, be say arcane for you, because it's a well, it's it's either arcane or animal handling, whichever one you like better. Or arcane? Okay. Probably arcane, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. going to bet on arcane. Okay, uh, well, th that would be a 21. 21, okay. Um, Nigel says he saw things last night. Um, big things that walked by the edges of the trees with the trees. Like the trees moved out of their way so that these things could pass. Uh, not only that... But there is a mist that is thick and it smells like blood. He doesn't know what that is either. But the arrow, he saw the man that shot it. And it is a man. But he seemed to move from shadow to shadow, however fast or slow he wanted to. Hmm. Interesting. Has been, now familiars, as a rule of thumb, mm -hmm. don't exist on the same plane we do. They're just guests here whenever you summon them. Right. So. What he may think is something moving with the trees may just look huge to him because he's a spider. That's fair. <laughs> so you, you, can't, you can't take a, you can't take everything he says literally, but he is honest. Just mm. may not be the right honesty. That's fair. He's a spider. He's a spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Isaac, can you? Make out any details of the man that shot the arrow. Um, Nigel will, will hop down and he'll uh, go over to like some loose dirt and sand, mm -hmm. and he'll you know move his body and he'll drag one leg like he's drawing in the sand. <laughs> it's awesome. He's a familiar, right? He can he can communicate. Yeah. Uh, and he's then he's a strong leg. <laughs> using a strong arm. <laughs> and uh, after a while, he draws a circle. And inside the circle is a, um, it almost looks like a, a seashell, but it has a trident through it, like a, like a three, three lines and then a long. Uh, I got a roll of history for that symbol. Sure. 
Uh, that's a 19. <clears throat> yes, this, the symbol is for a druidic order, and it's for the children of Naya. They are, they are basically, uh, they believe that rain is the most powerful thing in the world. And that when things come through their forest that impede the rain, they take offense to that. So they uh, don't take kindly to giant work wagons full of explosives crashing into their trees. That's fair. Oh, Nephilim, um, <laughs> here's uh, who your messenger was. Ah, interesting. And of course, I would know who they are. Yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah. Um, you're, you're not so good friends with them. Because they they consider themselves extremists, or well, they don't. But the, the rest of everybody the else druids, does. All the other yeah. druids do because yeah. they're yeah they're the alt right, you know, or yeah. whatever. They're, <laughs> the mega they're in yeah. alt direction. Yeah, they're in alt direction. Make the forest great again. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, let's try to avoid their domain if at all possible. Yeah. The yeah, typically, they're... typically they don't mess with you as long as you leave them, leave their home alone. They leave you alone. I will endeavor to do just that. <clears throat> um, let's see. You're talking to Nigel. Mm -hmm. You're talking to you. Make a perception check. Yeah. That's a spin down. Plus, so it's gonna <laughs> six. Yeah, you need a good one, dog. Yeah. Let's see if there's another one on here. Well, no, tray of them that, up there. Okay, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say that's the randomized. So <laughs> Magic the Gathering spin yeah, downs those... are not good for rolling. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> There's All a right, low side right. and a high side. <laughs> Do the small creatures hear anything or see anything and start making noises? No, but they're quiet. Ooh. Quiet. Completely quiet. It's very quiet. Oh God. Um. Can I roll perception to see if I notice the silence? Uh, yeah, disadvantage because you're chatting with him about yeah. about yeah. druid stuff. And you roll for me again with a different dice. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's a 16 either way. I've rolled two 13s. Double, two 13s. <laughs> Plus my perception bonus. So Seven. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, yes, you very much so. In the middle of the conversation, notice that uh, all of the woodland creatures and even the wind itself has stopped. Everything is very, very quiet. <laughs> Don, I think we need to get on the wagon and get out of here quickly. Uh, well, you don't see him. We don't see John? Yeah, he's gone. The wagon's still there? Yeah. Oh, no. He <laughs> 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 wouldn't just be out behind the tree, you know, taking a wicked whiz. That's out in tall grass. Yeah. Oh, geez. Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Clever girl. <Yeah. laughs> Fractor guy. Uh, yeah, it becomes apparent fairly quickly that uh, John's not in camp. And this whole phenomena of being uh, in the woods, surrounded by forest, effectively, and not hearing anything but the sound of your own breathing and the words you speak. No rustling of leaves, no timber, talking to each other as trees are blown around, not even crickets. We try to look for him in the forest or when we get the wagon and leave. Are you in the forest or are you in a, like a field? No, you're in a forest. Like you're, in you're, forest. you're like in a small clear. It's a clearing. small, small clear. Yeah. If we do not find Jonathan, then who will pay us? Why would we be out here to begin with? I know what I can do. Yeah. I'm going to wild shape into a wolf. Okay. So I assume the size, shape of a wolf and all of its abilities. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. I want to start sniffing for John. Keen senses. 
Right. Yeah. Perception check at advantage. Good thing. Uh, 15. 15. <clears throat> so you move around the side of the wagon over to the tree where the arrow had landed. Um, and you see some leaves that are disturbed. And they move about 15, 20 feet toward one end of the, uh, of the camp into the edge of the forest. And they move another 10 or 15 feet into the forest. Then there is a bunch of movement that you can see on the ground. It looks like there was a struggle. Hmm. Do I see or can I smell which direction they go off in? They don't. They stop here. But you can smell that smell that he, you know, his scent. He has that, you know, stank. He got that, he got that stank. <laughs> uh, so there's no movement in any direction from there. It's just a bunch of foot, and there's like the smell. Not, not that you can, not that you can see. It looks like whatever happened happened right here, and it stopped right here. I'll go back. Get right. those two. Yeah. Change back into the gnome. And one of us, like, where that all that happened, check for magic. Sure. How do you do that? Um, yeah. If, or, I can take a minute and then, uh, okay. as a ritual, I'll do, uh, detect magic. Okay. See if something magical happened, like a portal or well, something. Well, I mean, we've. I know I have detect magic. Do, do you have it as a spell? Not as a spell, no. Uh, if I help him, can that give him an even bigger advantage? Yeah, you can assist. Yeah, that'll, that'll, assist that'll, that'll grab him advantage. Okay. Yeah, I'll give I'll help him and give him some advantage on it. All right. So, uh, what do I need to roll for the advantage? Uh, if you cast it as a ritual, it takes ten minutes, and you don't have to roll anything. Okay. Well, I'd like to do that. And just take a little bit of time. Sure. Because uh, that also doesn't expend a spell slot, which this it's may good. be useful it's, yeah, because this be... is the start of the day and I feel like there's a lot more combat in store. <laughs> I'm um, more worried about whatever took him moved up. So, do you feel like uh, when you get over there and you, 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 know, you do your little ritual and you begin to... It doesn't jump out at you that any magic's been used here. This looks like an honest fight. Like, whatever happened, it happened over the course of a pretty large space. It's probably, you know, this whole area is... And we were just oblivious to it? <clears throat> yeah. Oh. So nothing magical? Perhaps we're just dumb. So, it's from from the outside perspective, as you guys see um, You see him over there doing his... Uh, speaks the words, and he's done this before, you know? Mm -hmm. As he moves over to that area... The sound stops. He's okay. moving his lips, but you can't hear any words coming. Okay. There's a force field around that area. Like he walked into a... Right? It looks like you can't see anything. You can't see anything, but that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Like he it's walked almost, into something I and we just that can't hear him. It's on a silence. If we go into a forest, we've got a giant stone <laughs> in it, and we're all mages. Uh, uh, hashtag that's, get fucked. Yeah. <laughs> you killed my orc. Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> my God. Um, oh, you guys thought this was gonna be easy? <laughs> the area where John is pretty. Anybody look up in the trees? I don't think anybody's no. done that yet. I'm look up. <laughs> Roll perception. Disadvantage. For both of us? Yeah. If you're over, if you're over there. Yeah. Fine. Wisdom. Wisdom. It'll be 10. Yeah. It's whatever that plus one is. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah plus one. 10. 10. 
Oddly enough, tan. Tan, both <laughs> of us. Uh, this looks like trees. Police didn't wind up like Predator. You woke up. <laughs> John's hanging up. Skin. <laughs> Skin. <laughs> um, nothing's changed for you. Okay. While you're standing over there and you, yeah, this, you, everything seems fine. You can hear your own footsteps in the leaves. You know, it's yeah. cool. I'm gonna look around a little bit in the area <clears throat> of where John went missing. You have to pee really bad. That's fair. I don't want to soil. You know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'll uh, uh, find a tree close by and turn my back to the rest of the group and do some business uh, I'm also feeling a little anxious about Jonathan being uh, you know not there so I will cast Mage Arm myself okay. and, uh, <laughs> midstream Mage Arm <laughs> <laughs> the only way to cast yeah, <laughs> back in your face <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's like peeing in the hand dryer. <laughs> um, um, pull him underground. Cool. So, uh, you get no, you get no, on with your full ritual, you get no indication that magic was used here. Cool. Um, after my pee, I would like to look around the area that uh, Jonathan went missing. Sure. See, see if. Uh, there's any sort of inclining as far as like uh, you said the trail stopped but uh, at least try to figure out a direction sure uh, well those are two is uh, all the way <laughs> two twos <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, looks like a trail yeah <laughs> that stops here that's wrong At is some point, not long ago. Or perception? Yeah. What are you doing? Is uh, it investigation or perception? You can do investigation, perception, or survival. I get a bonus to survival and with the with disadvantage. Uh, for you, yes. For him, no. He's a man of the woods. Uh, and what, what are you looking for? Tracks, Tracks. somewhere in the seventeen. Uh, twelve, twelve. You um, you got a what? Seven. Seven. Oh yeah. Okay. So you, uh, you're uh, you're looking around. Oh well, all three you are. Hmm. And yeah. Look at the sleeve. Yeah, you're like, man, <laughs> is this species of praying mantis I found? You. <laughs> but you uh, after a while, you begin to scatter the leaves and, and look around and stuff. And uh, you realize that there's something on the ground. You're like, what's this? And he comes over to you. And he says, oh. And he begins to uncover the leaves. And there is a big rune that's carved into the dirt. Hmm. Um, the, <laughs> a trap door. Like a, trap, like a cellar door. <laughs> See, um... So I don't get any... Inkling of detect magic from the rune? No, rune is just a, is a conduit. It doesn't mean in it itself is magic. Mm. You have to. It's like a, it's like probably a uh, knowledge. It's like a time. car. It's like a car without gas. It's still a car, but it doesn't do anything unless you add some gas to it. So could these two do a knowledge arcana check to see what that rune is? Sure. What is rule? Yeah, I can do. It. Yeah. Well, well, if what does that do? Religion, yeah. I religion, you know, religion. It's, it's like it's like for occult knowledge, or uh, right. if your if your character has faith, you know that sort okay. of thing. Or I kind of have a twenty-four. Right? Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're yeah. like you're like oh, I know exactly what this is. Yeah, okay. you, you've never <laughs> seen like runeology. Yeah, runeology is a thing, bro. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, this is a rune of communion. So this would be where if you were attempting to directly commune with divinity you would have one of these hmm. made into place it's a one time use thing and then the rune is basically destroyed afterward but it, this one is intact or it <laughs> it's used. already been used oh, you can tell well the 
to have it's one, it, it's like uh, it's like having it's like writing a letter. Mm -hmm. Like so, there's the body of the letter is basically all the same, but the to who and the from is always different, and they add those parts to it. So whenever you burn it up, it destroys that part of it. So that's why it's one time use. Mm -hmm. So you would uh, you would need to add the you know the tribute to whatever divinity, and you would have to add whatever uh, you know to whom it may concern. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> that still hmm. doesn't explain where John. No, it doesn't. And you said there's there are two piles of leaves. Yes. Uh, is that just one of them? That was just the one. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Let's go check the other one. Go out. Go kick these uh, <laughs> leaves off of this one. Uh, you find John's pistol. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. I just said, uh, just a pistol laying on the ground. Well, it was under the leaves. Under the, well, yeah. Yeah. So there was a struggle. Somebody knocked the gun out of his hand and somebody grabbed him. Yeah. So what do you think? <laughs> Pew. <laughs> <laughs> Still Trigger know. discipline. Trigger. <laughs> Still doesn't explain how they got him out of here without there being any tracks of where they went. Has it been far? I have no idea what that means. Just smell like he shot it. <laughs> Smells like gunpowder. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I suppose so. Everybody make a perception check. Yes. The stumpy. <laughs> okay. A 20. 20. 22. 22. <laughs> 22. All of you. Um, so, as you're standing here, you know, going over what you found so far, um, all of you, you know, just kind of examining your surroundings or whatever, and all of you, because you're not, you know, you can see camp from where you're standing, and you look over and uh, you see... John is standing next to the way. And he's yelling at you, but you can't hear him. Run towards him. Okay. Yeah, get the fuck out of there. After a few seconds, you see him, he's going, <coughs> <coughs> and he's, he's coughing into his hand. He's like, where'd you guys go? I thought you deserted me. You disappeared. You disappeared. We went looking for you. No. I went over there to piss, and I came back, and you were gone. It looks like you were fighting something, though. So must have one hell of a piss. Find your gun. I've been standing here for an hour. Where's your gun? And he pulls his, you know, his duster back, and it's gone. He's like, "Well, oh, you fucker stole it." I just want to let you know he has it. <laughs> <laughs> but we are here to return your weapon we found over here. In the creepy hmm. woods aside. Do you remember the arrow hitting the tree? What arrow? Oh. Ah. Hmm. Interesting. Might I protect magic still available? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it's as long as it's a ritual, you can cast as many times as you want. It doesn't consume a slot to, okay. to do as a ritual. That is, is the arrow still there? Well, the yeah. I, yeah, he brought I, it to you. Yeah, I've, okay. I've still got it. Like I show so him. You had it on. Okay, you had yeah, it on I'm your... showing him the arrow. Like somebody fired this elven assassin arrow into a tree to give him a message. You don't remember the arrow hitting the tree? I said I've been. I woke up and you guys were gone, hmm. and I've been standing here for an hour, and then you just wandered off in the trees. I mean, have you had breakfast yet? No, I had to eat your share. I was gonna make you some. That means it was more pain. We need to get out <laughs> of this. Out on us. We need to get out of this forest right now. Right now. Time is not normal in this forest. Is John still we there? We need to leave. Yeah, he's here. This is the last time he said that. John disappeared. Said what? We need to get out of the woods. Yeah. And right then, John disappeared. 
He's, st- he's still there. Yeah. Okay. This time he's still there. He's still there. We need to get the wagon hitched and get out of this clearing and out of this forest right now. This is not good. It's this is home. bad. Yes. Very bad. We all leave. The gnome. At one time, we are leaving. You <laughs> really, like, Rings, you see the gnome leaving. turning in circles with his hands in the air, going, "Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out!" Okay. Oh, Jonathan, here you are. Jesus Christ! Because <laughs> 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 he's a, he's a thing here. <laughs> and he, you know, he steps to one side and you know, pushes that aside, and he says, "Oh, let me have that." And he, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and he politely pulls your finger out of the, out of the trigger. <laughs> <hole>. <laughs> uh, and he, you see him holster his weapon and he throws his coat back over it and goes over to the wagon and, you know, uh, <clears throat> he takes his coat and he uh, lays it down on top of the fire pit and he stomps it out where there's nothing there. He shakes his coat out and puts it back on. <clears throat> what? When we met him, his coat smelled like fire. Yeah. <laughs> See, look at you <laughs> picking up on details. <clears throat> he uh, throws his coat back on and spins the wagon around the room. Come on, let's get the hell out of here. That's a very good idea. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I think I think we're good to leave. <laughs> yeah, we need to leave. Yes, I think we need to leave. You're done. You're done with the woods. We're yeah. done with the woods. I think we're done with the woods. All right. Uh, you move on. Uh, you break the the wood line and get back onto the main road. Um, uh, John takes the wagon back down the hill a little bit to where the orc wagon went off the side, mm-hmm. and it doesn't look like it ever happened. All the scrap is gone. Bodies are gone. Foliage is repaired. Um, anything, any tree, any flower, any blade of grass that was damaged has been fixed. Wow. Like it would have taken a full scale crew of men several hours. I have two theories. Theory one. We're still stuck in whatever time loop enchants this woods. Theory two. Those druids work very fast. I would be inclined to agree. Yes. Uh, John, we need to leave this area very fast. Okay. He spins the dragon around and then up you go. Man. You break out of the wood line of this forest inside of half a day. Um, no other weird occurrences happen. Um, just as you are breaking the wood line, uh, right as it kind of it breaks down into several like pastures on either side, um, uh, all of you smell soot and ash. There's a forge or something nearby. Um, and there is a, a chain gang on one side of the road. And they're digging ditches. <clears throat> there are probably 25 or 30 of them. There are, they're all shackled and chained together. Um, and then there's a half-orc man uh, on a war horse who has a double-barreled weapon and a uh, sword hanging off one hip. And he is patrolling up and down. While they dig a ditch. Hmm. What races are the chain gang? Oh, all sorts. Uh, but the overwhelming majority of them are dragonborn. Dragonborn? Yep. Hmm. Probably 60% of them are dragonborn. And they're all the same color, too. Silver. Definitely prejudice. Silver? Silver. <laughs> <laughs> As in good dragon. Yeah, metallic. Interesting. Um, is the only guard the guy with the gun? Yes. Hmm. Other than the silver dragonborn, do we see much of anything else? I mean, like race-wise, like dwarves, elves. What, what, what are we looking at? Yeah, there's. Uh, I'd say you know, let's say sixty percent of them are dragonborn. They're basically all silver. Some of them could probably be mistaken for blue if you looked hard enough, um, but most of them are about the same. 
Um, there is a good chunk of them that are humans of various ages, some anywhere from late forties to early twenties. Um, there are, there's one known girl, uh, off to one side, but she looks like she's been here a while. She's got the, the, like the skin around her wrists and ankles and stuff is calloused, you know, Mm -hmm. where she's been in chains for a long time. Um, there are two, uh, young elven men, off to one side. When I say young, young for elves, hell, that can be who knows how old. But uh, <laughs> but uh, than us. <laughs> but they uh, but they look youthful, and they are uh, complaining to each other about food and how everything here tastes like shit. <laughs> as you go by, um, and then there are down on the on the very 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 end, last one in line is a portal. John, you know anything about that? Uh, looks like convicts. Probably deserters. Taking a quick look to see if I recognize anybody. Sure. <clears throat> That's a natural twenty. <laughs> I'll see if I recognize. That's it. Twice, now. chat. Okay. Twice. That's a seventeen. <laughs> Falcon says, "Been rode hard, put up wet." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. The little known girl, um, you don't recognize her, but you recognize her markings. And uh, she is an exile, meaning that she's done something to whoever her people are, whether it's family, it could be business, it could be something, but she has a tattoo on the side of her face that goes down across her cheek and across her lips. And uh, it indicates that she was responsible for some major crime it could have been a variety of things everything from like embezzling tons of money all the way to murder so it could have been any number of things but she done something seriously wrong and she's doing hard time for it um <clears throat> but you know based on her um the way she looks and as you get closer to her you can tell that she's got some uh lineage tattoos on her too then uh she comes from uh basically a sect of gnomes that um, primarily researches medicine. So she, uh, but not like arcane medicine, like actual medicine, medicine, sabs and, um, you know, she, her, like a, the original form of like penicillin and antibiotics was developed here, that kind of thing. She's Walter White. <laughs> Could be. Vincent, um, Earlier, when we were in the inn, you um, made a suggestion to some people. Oh, yes. Um, I wonder if you might be able to make a suggestion to the guard. Actually, as you go by, the the guard will kind of fall in step with the side. It's sort of protocol. It right. get, gets between you and them in case you want to try something funny. But he'll bullshit with you, you know, while he's doing it. You know, he's, he's, he's a pretty friendly guy for the most part. He, you know, comes up next to the wagon, big half orc, you know. And he says, Oi, how you doing? Doing pretty good. Uh, everything quiet today? Yeah, it's been a hell of a morning so far. Um, probably getting ready to feed the fuckers lunch. Uh, I got a bowl of chili to trade if you got something gooder than that. I throw a little gold on top, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I might be able to whip something up. It's, I've been known to make a, a pretty good stew from time to time. And you, you hear John from the driver's seat audibly. <sighs> I'd like to... Uh, just one moment, sir. And I uh, come up there to where I can whisper to yeah. John. John, uh, you're out for revenge on someone, and you don't know how many men they might have, and we may have just stumbled across a bunch of people that would be incredibly indebted to us if we were to help them. They broke the law. They had their chance. What law would Silver Dragonborn break? Well, you'll kind of... He'll slow the horses down a bit to where it's more of a trot. 
right? You know, and he'll he'll uh, you know tie the reins around the post in the center, basically autopilot. And he'll uh, and he'll he'll turn his his whole figure toward you to where you can read his face, and uh, you could tell in his eyes that he takes this subject really seriously, and he says and he says anybody that ends up in chains because of the system deserves it. I would suggest you mind your business. I second Jonathan. But if you insist on trading for the nice fellow's chili, I can take a 10 minute break. I could use a cigarette. Fair enough. Pulls the wagon off to one side, goes up to the horses and hands them a, a uh, yep, gives them a feed pouch and some water and uh i can create some water if he needs any extra. <laughs> uh and he uh you see him reach into his pocket and he's got a bag of tobacco and several thin papers and you see him roll a cigarette and he lights it and begins to just sort of walk around the roadside on the other side away from the convicts mm-hmm. hmm. coughs every five or ten minutes something like that uh, i uh yeah uh, Give a side and F him and uh, ask, Are you really suggesting that we free hundreds of indebted criminals? It's probably 25 or 30 total. I-, I thought you said there were 30 chain gangs. No, no, no. The whole chain gang oh, okay. is 30. <laughs> yeah. no, one, was a- one dude couldn't watch hundreds of people. I mean, he could. Well, I mean, I guess maybe if he's on state pay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They, be more like they, they might be low there. risk. Um, All right. My, my only concern is um, what law could a silver dragonborn break that would be just. And cause them to be in chains. They are not evil. Now the rest of these people, eh, maybe they are and maybe they aren't. And I'm not going to argue that. But a bunch of silver dragonborn don't go around breaking laws. And they don't get put in chain gangs because, you know, somebody just felt like something's off if you see something like that it means they're here against their will for whatever reason all right i'll give you this benefit of doubt you've bought some time i will ask a question or two and i will report back to you but I really do not have a good feeling about this. How do you know we trust them? We don't. We don't, but at the same time, none of the three of us are exactly good in a fight. We couldn't defend ourselves against... I mean, yeah, we managed to get away last night, but at the same time, if we run into something more physically imposing that our spells don't really do a lot too we're gonna need somebody to help us and we may not be able to run away alright um I is the cart covered John's John's cart yeah. no no it's open it's open okay yeah so, I mean, I could I try to go around to the other side so it's not like obvious what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm trying to trying to hide off to the side and like uh, cast a little little magic magic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be kind of nonchalant about it. Maybe uh, maybe I'll pull up Nigel and uh, pretend like I'm talking to him instead. Okay. It's not right. it's not uncommon for wizards to be weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm gonna right. talk to my There's a badger over here squeaking at me, so yeah. it's fine. <laughs> so in my hand mm-hmm. under Nigel will be a thin copper wire. Yep. And I wanna cast message to mm-hmm. one of the uh, one of the Dragonborn convict. Just okay. uh, Alright, so let's see. Um 
whisper a message. Only them and I can hear. Um, and then they can reply. So, uh, I would like to ask... Well, first I'd like to state... <laughs> Hold on. Um, I think message has to be pretty quick, isn't it? Yes. Do not be alarmed, but I want to ask you a question. And then, uh, I mean, I can cast it multiple times. It's a cantrip, things. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, my friends are interested in what you have done to get in your situation. You may reply. You see, you know, <clears throat> you've drawn some attention. I mean, everybody's still working, mm -hmm. but the pace is kind of slowed because they're checking you out in between swings or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see one of the females, uh, mm -hmm. the silver dragon. She, uh, she's probably the closest distance to you. Yeah. She, uh, you see her, uh, her um, eyes just kind of perk up, and uh, she, uh. <clears throat> She, you see her sort of, she takes her, her shovel and she pushes it in the ground or whatever. You see her kind of, <sighs> she stretches out and she turns to where her back is to the guard. Mm -hmm. And it, she goes. And she goes back to work. No time for it. <clears throat> okay. Not the time. That depends on however you want to interpret that. But she right. definitely understood you. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah. the orc is like, it's what you got. You know, he's... I'm over there whipping up some stew. Because <laughs> my guy's a cook. <laughs> I'm the one that cooks the food for people. Uh, let's see, what would that be? Is it performance, maybe? Well, or... I don't know. How, however, you would want to do. Maybe well, it'd be, wouldn't it be survival? Yeah, you could. Cook? Yeah, you do survival. I'm good with that. There's no cooking check, but yeah. I, I'd say you could kind of make it whatever you wanted to. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've got advantage on those. All right. Good. So, uh, nineteen plus three is twenty-two. Holy <laughs> shit! This is the first kid Millie's had in his life. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm chatting him up, you know. And he's he's like, "What salt?" <laughs> 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 It kills you. <laughs> no, um, I guess while they're doing that, uh, I'll try to uh, looking at the the most experienced in the chain gang, the gnome woman. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna try and message her. Okay. Uh, so I'll message. Do not be alarmed. I would like to ask you a few questions. You may reply. Um, she, her ears perk up, you know, as soon as she hears the message. Um, you can see that uh, she does a similar sort of body language, like, you know, where she's you know, trying to keep. And you you have maneuvered him to where his back is sort of. I got him yeah, distracted because yeah, yeah, you got the greatest yeah, two of you're, all you're time. You're running yeah. a con. I get it. <laughs> 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 And uh, you see her, she, she sort of, uh, she sort of uh, turns to you. And she's a lot more deliberate mm -hmm. with giving me what the hell she got to lose. Right? <laughs> she's out here shoveling shit. So she's, <laughs> she, uh, she, uh, she looks at you and you see her go. Understood. Not talking with that money. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'll do message one more time. Yep. And uh, I'll message Ephraim. They cannot speak with the chains. Oh. Now that he says that, there's been no words or songs since you came up. The chains have silence built in. You cannot form a resistance if you can't communicate. Fair enough. Hmm. Uh, so what was your name? <laughs> the half work? Durak. Durak. I gotta be honest with you, man. Durak. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta be honest Got with you. Got a people's elbow. <laughs> 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 it's beautiful. Can you smell <laughs> <a> Nephilim's cooking? <laughs> he can. <laughs> 
I had a. I was just wondering, what is a fellow like you the doing? The whole time you're here? talking, you're <laughs> starting, you know, these, these uh, ruffians. Um, he says, Well, uh, I need money, and I'm big, so I got a job. Oh. That math checks out. Interesting, interesting. Huh. Got any idea what they did? Yeah. He continues to eat. What did they do? He goes, It's on the paper. Hold on. And he goes back. And he gets it. And he looks at the paper and he puts it back in his saddlebag. And he says, No. And he goes back to you. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, it seems like an odd. Uh... He finishes the bowl. Oh. More. <laughs> Here you go, bud. More. It just seems like he's like, holy fuck, it's so good. (laughs) (laughs) It was a gluttoning out. Okay, um, just seems like a weird collection of uh, people, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. um... (laughs) Can I get some more of the chili? It's pretty good. So he's he's helping. He's he's trying to communicate. He's running. Distraction. What are you doing? Hmm. John's just not participating. Yeah. 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 Uh, I really want to look at that list of prisoners right next to the, the rock. The rock. Yeah, right next to I have a way. You do? I think I do. Oh, all right. So I would like to use Nigel. Okay. Hmm. But I'm going to also possess his senses so that I hear and see what Nigel. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Go for it. And uh, I'd like to have a stealth check for Nigel to climb into the saddle. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use my lucky day. All right. Uh, that's better. It's a 16. All right, I'm gonna roll perception for him, but he's distracted, so it's a disadvantage. There's a one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you roll your divination for the day? Oh, I have not. That's a good idea. Yes, <clears throat> I'm gonna do that now. A five and a five. There you go. You can make some. Fat roll. You can baby. make some. You can make somebody have a bad day. If you want. <laughs> So yes, absolutely. You feel like you could have probably just walked over there and looked, and it would, and it would have been okay. Fair, fair. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> Nigel's gonna sloop into the saddle bag and get a, a looky poo at that paper. There, uh, so there's a list of names. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no races or ages indicated, but there is a list of names. So it's sort of hard to pinpoint perpetrators or who's who. I'm just looking at list of crimes or like sentencing because of yeah yeah I get you yeah. oh, you have me a ball of water behind you of course yeah, yeah. I don't like cold water yeah dude it's my favorite thing oh jeez I thought that I didn't realize how long I'd been sitting my knees are like hey yeah it's time to stretch a little bit yeah <laughs> So, yes. <clears throat> you begin, you go through some of the names and sort of pish poshed and mismatched together. Some of them, uh, some crimes major, some crimes you're like, why in the hell did he get a harsh sentence like that for that? Some of them are uh, shoplifting. Some of them are um, domestic disturbances. Some of them are, you know, crimes that you know carry a fine but don't necessarily carry hard time like this so you got the list uh, and okay. and uh you get to a uh, a little um uh kathira is the name on it mm-hmm. um but it shows on doesn't show like race is what i was talking about but it does show age and time served mm-hmm. and she's right at 40 and she served 30 and uh, you get a, a feeling in your gut. You don't know how to explain it, but you just feel like that's the Nomish girl. Right. And 
she uh she has conspiracy um to perpetrate and overthrow government okay um is she's, there anything on the paper 10. about who is she she was 10 when she committed it <laughs> wicked no yeah hmm uh, is there anything on the paper about who's issued these orders and sentences? Just the system. Uh, and it would be just sort of Iron Mill as a, as a, as a whole country. Um, you know, it's, it's more of a state. It sort of exists like that. I was that. wondering if there was like some barren tyrant overlord kind of deal. <laughs> um, no, honestly, this could have come from anywhere in Iron Mill. Okay. So um, it, it does say, uh, it, there is a penitentiary that's labeled on it, but it's uh, whose name escapes me right this second, but it is much further south. You know, several, probably a week's plus ride to get there. Okay. But it's not uncommon for them to do things, public service things like digging ditches and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they, they go out for weeks at a time and they, you know, they camp and they eat and they live off the land and then they do their deed and they go back. And this is sort of like a good behavior thing. Oh. Got it. <clears throat> Uh, then you get into some more of uh, draconic names, um, and you get the feeling that this is those dragonborn that are that are down there on the end, and all of them virtually have the uh, the same charge, more or less, thievery, but federal like no, I, I, federal's the wrong word, but <laughs> of, like stealing from the government is kind of what they're doing. Like, whatever happened, this big group of them was liberating something, and they got caught. Ah. And to be here doing time for it, it was something major. Uh, feminine. Um, I'll have Nigel scurry out, and, uh, I'll message Nephilim and tell him, well, it seems like all of the Dragonborns were pinched in an operation of some sort of theft um but this seems like it's almost the primary arcanist group primary arsonist group no arcanist arcanist, arcanist. I'm the arsonist <laughs> <laughs> that's true though <laughs> do you think that you can suggest to this fellow to head home to the penitentiary and you know he just can't remember where they got to something hit him on the back of the head um see the thing is I found this new concept of chilling I can suggest he drop trow and do a dance for us but altering his memory, I don't think is within that capability. So you're, you're still standing back there, sort of like on the back corner of the wagon, right? Like where you said you were? Yeah. Yeah. John's going to come over. He's, he's on his second or third cigarette at this mm -hmm. point. <clears throat> and he's going to sort of lean up against the wagon. Just sitting okay. there with John, thinking I, about taking up smoking. I'm just yeah. sitting here, <laughs> you, you finish whispering that, uh, to my hand. <laughs> finish that stew there, uh, Duroc. I, I, I need to go speak with my... Uh, Duroc. I need to go speak with my companion. Mm -hmm. And you can see his belly is getting pooched out. He's, <laughs> he's like, shit out of this. I go up to John, and I'm like, hey, um, so Vince was... Uh, speaking to some people you don't need to know exactly how just to know that he's speaking with some people yeah probably with magic yeah <laughs> and he's found out some information because if I, he did speak out loud we could all hear him uh -huh. big mouth I, uh, just a little bit <laughs> I don't think that these people are here for breaking actual crime you see John back sort of stiff and didn't we have this talk before I got off?
you need help tracking somebody that you very much want to have a long conversation with with your fists and or that pistol that you keep on your side, right? We have no idea where they are. We have no idea how many of them there are. Would be a you say so are you suggesting that we make friends with criminals by freeing them? Maybe we make acquaintances for later on when we might need some help with something. Is this about some known pussy? <laughs> he's, he's, he's just honest, yeah. you know. He's <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> well, in all actuality, not really. I mean, I wouldn't turn her down if she offered, but it's actually... We're in a position to help them, possibly... You know, you're kind of indebted to somebody that saved your life and got you off a chain gang. So, maybe we call in a favor later on when we need a favor. John is going to take a drag off his cigarette. And he's going to... Persuasion check? Because I I assume that, you know, Vincent's here, Mm -hmm. and then John's beside him, and then you're on the other side of John. Yeah. All right. He's gonna he's gonna sort of you know motion you to come over, and John is just gonna kind of lean up against the side of the wagon, you know, to put his hand between the prisoners yeah. and, and him where he can speak without anybody reading his lips because they're watching you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's gonna he's gonna say he's gonna look at Vincent, but he's really speaking to you. But he's looking at Vincent. He's just he's got a chain around his neck. The boss over there. He um. If you try to magically persuade him, every fucking guard in within several miles is going to come down on us. It's basically a high alarm to prevent guards from falling over dead via magic. If there's any sort of spell cast within a certain amount of feet of him, it'll go off. These guards are not magic. I know. I was one. He does, however, carry two copies of the key. He's required to by law. One was on his person, and the other on that horse over there. I would, if you're going to free the criminals, and he says it with jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> he says it with jazz hands. So it means more. <laughs> free the criminals. I won't have any part of it other than not saying anything if you do it. So how's staying out of your way for and providing you enough information not to get pinched. Hmm. If we do this, we set off the alarm. Is there a way to do it without setting off the alarm? I look at John's sidearm. (laughs) (laughs) He covers the sidearm with his coat. You you almost (laughs) shot me with it earlier. You mentioned... John, that you used to be a guard. Yes. Before I served in the military, I was I was a prison guard. Do you happen to know how much these boys get paid? They don't. Their families do. Hmm. They don't. They don't. <laughs> What's it probably a, how, how are you gonna how you gonna trouble. pay somebody that goes out here for months on end? Don't. You give him enough food to survive and to take care of the people he's with, and every time his check comes in at the end of the week, they send it to whoever his people are. What happens to his family? Well, simply. If something happens to prisoners under his watch. I don't think his family has anything to do with his job performance. Okay. He was wondering if it's a... No, no, they don't whack the family because the the car did a bad job. I mean, we don't don't know. (laughs) But but that check stops coming. (laughs) Um, Give me a moment. Go back over, sit down. Hey, do you need some more stew? (laughs) You can see he's kind of... uh, (laughs) of Where are you you from, Duroc? um, What do you do when you're not doing this? This is, uh, it's from, ooh, 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not looking so good there, Garage. <laughs> I think he needs a beverage. Yes. Oh, Do we have any? He needs a what? A beverage. A beverage. Do we have any beverages? Well, um, I do have some rather strong mead. Hmm. It's a rock like mead. Rock like mead? <laughs> Interesting. This is turning into cool hand, Luke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're about to reservoir dogs and shit, are <laughs> I'll give him some mead. Hey, you look like you need a drink. Oh, he just guzzles it. Good. Go, good, go, good. Go, go. Um. <clears throat> so he walks back off, and I assume you're with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're over there messing with Duroc. Mm -hmm. John's with you. All right. Um. Now, if we free them without magical means, will he still be able to raise the alarm? He can, mm. you know. He is. That's what the chain's for on his neck. Right. It's a life alert. So, <laughs> so if we don't, let's say, let's uh, hypothesize. Um, what if he couldn't grab the chains? Uh, then nothing can happen, as long as nothing magical happens. Yes. It's but if you try to hold person him, that will trigger. Correct. But what if many persons were to hold his person? <laughs> what if many people? <laughs> uh, he seems like such a nice gentleman. He has control over them. That's why they're not tied to the ground or why they're not tied to him. The chains give him the ability to command them at will. Mm. So if one of them were to decide they were going to hold him, he can just tell them stop, and they will. Unless we got the chains off him. It's like a chain of command, literally. Nah. nah literally. Nah. It's a chain of command. <laughs> you finally figured out my joke. <laughs> very, very nice. Come on, nice. that was good. That was good. Yeah. Ha ha. It's like the ultimate dad joke. <laughs> John reaches in his uh, one of the bags inside the top of the wagon and he pulls out a small hunk of uh, it's kind of like bread but it's got oats in it uh, it's sweet kind of it's uh, use it it's, John really likes breakfast <laughs> so it's like it's, so he, a lot of the food that he carries is like that um, <laughs> I feel uh, some uh, 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 betraying yeah, <laughs> um, he takes parts of the oats, and uh, you see him. He treats them like sunflower seeds. Like he'll pop one in his mouth, mm -hmm. move it around, and he'll take it out. And over the course of five or ten minutes, while you're talking to him, he builds up this little pile of these things mm -hmm. across to one side. He takes little pieces of the bread and he you know, puts them. Uh, rolls it up in his finger and he just sort of you know, feeds the birds that sort of thing mm. and after a while some time um, you see Duroc's horse begin to nibble at these oats mm. uh, then he starts flicking them toward the back of his wagon and then around to the one side of it there's someone who said passive you sure are out. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm having a snack. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll... Uh, so, at this point, uh, would the cart be in the way between the rock and uh, I and yeah. the horse? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to you know, just casually uh, uh, look for a uh, second key. Okay. Investigation. Uh, uh, yeah, that'll be a 12. That's enough. You just need 10. Okay. Uh, so you look through the bags, can't find anything, although they stink. 
can't figure out why, but it feels like maybe there was something. Like he could have found a squirrel and hmm, stuck it in his bag or something. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you finally notice it after a while, and it's uh, it's looped around the stirrup down there, where, his, uh, where he would place his boot. It is wrapped around one side of the stirrup, and then it's wrapped behind the stirrup strap. So it's very hard to see, uh, but mm. you know, once you turned it, you may have turned it just right looking or whatever, and right. the sun gleamed on it. But yeah, you saw it. Okay. So yeah, he's he's got it hid pretty well. You get to think that he probably didn't hide it there. It probably was always like that when he left. He just doesn't know he has it. Oh. <laughs> Can't you need some me. more mead to rock? <laughs> to rock's <perfect>. full. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to be uh, pulling that key off. Mm. Tell me about your family, Duroc. What uh, what are they like? I love my mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, as you're feeling with it, you know John is still off to one side, but he's John is is basically being looked out for you without being you know he's not participating. He swears he's not participating. Yeah. <laughs> he's lighting his fourth cigarette, <laughs> and he um. He um, takes it and you know you see him. He'll inhale a little bit and you'll see him. He'll blow the smoke up in the air and as he does, you see his eyes kind of track which way the the wind's blowing or whatever. And uh, he'll say, "Careful how you touch that. It don't belong to you." Hmm. Don't know that I would touch the key itself. Probably wouldn't hurt to touch the chain though. Okay. To heed that warning. Maybe uh, try and lift it off by the chain. Slide with... a hand. Okay. Uh, that's a nine. I don't have any dexterity bonus. Uh, but I do have a lucky. Um, yeah, I think it'll be worth it. Uh, that is a worse roll of seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So yeah, you got the front of it pulled down and there's that part that's looped around the inside of the stirrup and you're like, how in the fuck do I get this off here without, you know, touching it? Because I have to pull it down one side and push it up the other. Like it's, The it, lark's it's, head. It's incredibly inconvenient how it's on here. Okay. It was made it, made it intentionally very hard to steal. Over here fiddling. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. And you see, eventually everybody hears the plump of Duroc falling backwards on his back and he's just looking at this guy <sighs> got the meat sweats <laughs> he's got meat sweats so he's got meat sweats combined with the meat yeah, yeah. he's yeah he's not here man no alright uh I'm gonna Duroc's not here man yeah <laughs> I'm gonna use mage hand and try and like grab the end of the lark's head and slide it down past the key and try it again all right yeah so roll uh give me another sleight of hand with advantage okay uh that's a 13. there you go that's more like it so yeah it took you a couple of tries but yeah eventually you hear the little cling and the the chain separates and off uh, the key comes and it's sort of the mage hand has it and it's sort of floating in the air okay um uh, who are we like in the middle of the chain gang? Effectively, well, no, you're sort of down toward the one end. The dragonborn are on the far end. Okay. So the gnome's over by us. Yeah, she's close. Okay. And uh, can I get a better description of the uh, chains? I'm gonna look more at like how they're like. Is it a lock per person? Yes. Okay. So it's um so it's a shackle and a and a manacle. And then there is a silver chain between them, and there, it hooks to this one, and then this one hooks to the person next to them, so on and so forth. Uh, like a daisy. <laughs> yeah. So it, a daisy chain of command. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're all looped from one side, but they all have individual locks on them. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to pull one guy out of the middle, you could, without uh, compromising the whole lock. Hmm. Interesting. Or without compromising the whole chain. Um, but there is no way that you can see based on this distance there's no way to break it without breaking the whole chain yeah I'm doing every single one 
Yeah. Um, I don't think we're going to get this done with trouble already. <laughs> <laughs> my only thing is... Just toss it over there and what comes may come. <laughs> Here's my thing. What happens, happens. I don't... I don't want anything to happen to Duroc. Yeah. He seems like a nice fellow. He does He's seem like a nice He's just doing his guy. job. And we're the ones that are like, oh, look at this grand opportunity to ruin your career. <laughs> well... No more stew for Duroc. <laughs> Maybe. We're guilty by association. Here's an interesting here's an interesting theory. Sure. So we free the prisoners. Mm-hmm. Duroc's gonna be in trouble. Prisoners got away. Um Maybe no And the, these ain't no low level prisoners. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, these are they're like Edward Snowden kind of prisoners. Yeah. <laughs> like they gotta flee the country. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a the way. The Rock's gonna have to flee the country. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way that we can do this without The Rock getting killed. The Rock, take him is, with us. This is why John didn't want no part of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> he knew it was gonna go sideways. It's right. gonna go pear shaped. You just watch. <laughs> oh, no, it's definitely looking bad. I don't. I don't want to go any further, honestly. Like I've, I've got the key, and I'm, I'm having real second thoughts. <laughs> Rock's learned the word asylum. Yep. The key's floating there in the air. You've got yeah. it by the mage hand. All right. Jonathan, what happens if the key is touched by? Well, if it's not Durak up there, hmm. the alarm goes off. Okay. What if the spectral hand? Same thing. Uh, it's magic. Wouldn't know if that works or not. I know that the chain that's around his neck is the one that suppresses and detects magic. But as far as I know, keys only activate on touch. Mm-hmm. So the only people that can free them are to rock. Yeah, the key doesn't look like a key. Like it's like a it's like a big silver rectangle is what it looks like. Yeah. And when Duroc touches it, it forms into a key and he can unlock somebody with it. It's coded to him. So you're gonna have to figure out how to code it. Hmm. How the fuck are we gonna pull this off? <laughs> I just said you're you're in like one of the most technologically advanced places in the world I just, even though you're in the countryside there's still tech boys, out here we're at the point of no return and i don't feel confident in the jump <laughs> i am going to get back up on the wagon and sit next to john and go yep and that's it but john's off the wagon he's down oh, there. He was still he's, up there he's down here basically eating sunflower seeds watching this idiot dance with his kid i thought he was up on the wagon no, doing that okay no he's um, he's off to one side he's and every, every now and then you'll see him, he'll blow some more smoke in the air. And he's, you know, watches which way it goes. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd uh, gently place, uh, let the key uh, hit the ground. And uh, uh, I'm just going to dismiss the spectral hand and I'm stumped. Duroc, where are these... Uh... Is there like a camp around here where you guys are at? I can make some more of that stew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is over there. And he just sort of moves his head. <laughs> Can't move nothing. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. He's, I mean, he ate himself stupid. Yeah, it's good stew. <laughs> it's really good stew. Three or four bowls what and a mead. What time of day is it? Uh, it's about midday. I'd say it's one, maybe two p.m. There's plenty of traveling ahead of us, kind of day. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna. Um, I feel like 
<laughs> Max got a bad feeling about it. Yeah, I've got a you can terrible see it in his feeling. face. You can see it in his face. Like we're gonna get <laughs> in so much trouble. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is I'll, like I'll, throwing the party that your as, parents as, said. As just poor old maybe a friend or two, nothing yeah. else. <laughs> and then you throw a rager, yeah. and then next thing you know, you're wondering why the golf carts crashed in the front yard. <laughs> um, or where you got a golf cart. So Durant, <laughs> Durant is pretty much passed out on the ground. Well, he's he's not passed out, but he's breathing heavy. <laughs> you let him bake here in the sun long enough, and he might take a nap. <laughs> he's, he took it hard, huh? Um, and that's that's why everything in, in this is here is designed the way it is because he could, and everything's yeah. fine. Yep. They got to do what he says. No, oh, um, I'm gonna leave the key there uh, under the horse. And just hey, I'm gonna cast message to Nephilim and say. This is incredibly fickle. And without this key making contact with the rock, we are essentially fucked. <laughs> essentially. Essentially fucked. <laughs> okay. It's under the horse if you want to give it a try. I think I'm finished. Idea. We take off down the road. You message one of them before we leave. And just let them do it. Just let them know that the key's under the what horse. Happens, happens. And whatever happens, happens. Whatever happens, happens. I agree. Now, if enough of them can get unchained, they can overbear him, especially the dragon. We're gonna get uh, oh, no. Stu, the gnome can over six hundred feet down the road and here, bang, bang, <laughs> and then <laughs> they'll get him. Uh, no, he'll probably get the one that got loose. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> That's not a guilty bit. Jerry, Jerry doesn't like to be beaten. Mm. <laughs> you see it in his face. He's like, fuck this game. <laughs> it's, it's just gnome because if, if there hadn't been, it's actually not the gnome. Although yeah. that's, well, she's been in, in jail for 30 years and she was 10 years old when they first chained her up. Yeah. So, oh, wow. come on. That's a bit much. But uh, what could a 10-year-old have done to deserve 30 years in jail? Treason. Well, treason's treason. Um, but how does a 10-year-old commit treason? That's a great question. Yes. That's the... Uh, that we will never find the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're out. <laughs> um, the more you know. John, do you know where the camp is that he's talking about? Yes. Then he just point to it. How heavily guarded is it? It's not. It's just him. It's just this guy. Mm -hmm. It's just the rock. Yeah, and he's out here. The rock and his Mission Impossible foolproof defense system. Yes. <laughs> 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 they wouldn't send one dude out with this many guys this far out if they weren't sure he was in control. Yeah. Okay. Hey, what? I'm gonna leave it up to you. What are you because doing? Get on the wagon. Yeah, get on the You know what he's going to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing he was saying at the beginning. Hey, I'm surprised he helped us. <laughs> Tell him. Send a message to the people. Okay. Whatever happens, happens. At least we gave him a little bit of a chance. You, uh... And before you leave, you know, you gather your things or whatever. Turok is passing out slowly. You can see it. He's fading fast. <laughs> um, John, Alaska. Any of you have a file? No? no. I do I've got a... Uh, I've got the adventures kit and the herbalism kit. It should be an adventures kit. I think the file's in there. Uh, yeah. I've got a scholar pack because I'm yeah, a yeah, yeah. That's for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a final. We're going to save it. 
just for drama. For drama. Okay. okay. <clears throat> John um, is a little bit of a hypocrite. He's like, yeah, no, I'm not going to help, not. but he's I not. will definitely help. <laughs> <laughs> Dungeoneer's pack is what I got. You got a what? Dungeoneer's, Dungeoneer's pack. pack. I know there's one in there. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah um, I think that comes with a crowbar. <laughs> yeah. <it does. laughs> Let's get serious. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a... John has a full kit that he carries uh, in his in the wagon that um, is for cleaning weapons. He has to. Yeah. So he's uh, he's got several replacement parts, and one of the parts that he replaces regularly is firing pins. He's got to have them. So he uh, he takes one down, and they're about yay low, give or take. And you see him uh, move off to one side, and he. Um, Begins to take that file and grind the end of that uh, firing tip or firing pin. Probably takes him ten minutes or so. And he finds it, you know, pretty sharp tip. And then uh, he takes a. Uh, um, he'll ask you in your scholar's pack. You'll say, "Got a bit of wax from a candle?" No. Indeed. See, so he, <laughs> he takes some of the wax and he goes around the bottom of the haft of it and scuffs it up with the the file a little more and then he <clears throat> pushes it down inside of a piece of cork that he has to plug barrels and uh, then ties it off with a piece of twine <clears throat> and you'll see it's crazy what you can do with so little and it ties it over your shoulder then he takes the wagon off everybody sees the file and t- can roll into the ditch next to the little gnome. Hmm. Do what you will with uh, that piece of information. Oh. Jonathan, are you developing a soft spot for <laughs> the ill proposed? And you hear the hammer draw back on his pistol. <laughs> 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 oh. I'll take that as a maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. Uh, You travel for the second half of the day, and uh, no sounds of, you know, disturbances behind you or anything. And um, you make it, and there's a little place off the side of the road uh, where you can make camp for the evening. um, You can see the road clearly from where you are. You're probably only 20, 30 feet off the road. Mm -hmm. Mace camp, and you guys can sleep it off, and that's where you stop. All right. 